Thank you for watching the After Files live stream. This is not a professional production. We don't know why anyone watches this thing, but we're glad you do. And now, to kick off the show is everyone's favorite sidekick, the one, the only, Hecklefish. That's good. That's on. All right, thumbs up. Do we have a good turnout tonight? I had to set up. I didn't really get to see the show. Four, four, about 44,000. That's pretty good. Can't complain about that. Who's here? Who's here in the chat? 
People are already asking for the word of the day for the game to be wet ass. I don't know if we can. I don't know if YouTube will let that. Victoria's saying no. Jen, a lot of ladies shaking their head. There's Ruben Ball now. I see you there. Tony Siler's there. GGGGG Goldman is back. Good to have you back. Christy Valdez. Del Moss 29. So that's what you're seeing is Gino screwing up on the production back end. He's trying. He's woof. I mean, it's, we had, and he's, and he knows it. And, um, yeah, so we had PowerPoints. Could you once, I mean, but, could you just one time conduct? I don't know what chat was trying to say. Tony Siler loves the show. Thanks, Tony. Levi walk up there, Jeremy Winfield. I don't know. And the mic is, and the speakers are too loud. It's, uh, hey, kids at home, if you want to learn how to do a professional live stream, watch something else. This ain't it. Hey, Robert, like the episode. Hey, I'm, I'm glad that you like that one. I wasn't sure how that would do. I'm still not sure. I mean, it's an intriguing, I mean, it's, I think it's a clickable title, Atlanta's First Lemuria. But it read very, very history channel to me. So um so in the in the in the middle and this episode has a second act problem. So in the second act I tried to put in some some weird stuff um from the original script. There wasn't any mention of Telos, so I put that in there. Cuz I, re I remember reading about Telos when um researching the Mount Shasta episode. I remember reading about that and going this is bonkers. And uh, bonkers is fun. So, uh, so I'm glad you like that. The consultant wants the word of the day to be uptight. Van72, OMG, fastest live chat on YouTube. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Um, Jenny, are we on slow mode? Or She says we're on slow mode. So here, it's a, this is an opportunity for a plug, Van, is Patreon members get two extra live streams a week. So we do like a pre-premiere party. Did I say that right? I can't do it again. It's hard to alliterate. We do a pre-premiere party on Discord, and instead of having 7,200 people in there, today we had about 80, 85. So everybody gets a chance to talk and and get your face up on screen. And we'll do another uh, Patreon chat tomorrow morning. So uh, Thursday nights and Fridays, if you want to join Patreon, it's only three bucks. Uh, Juan Cooper, have you ever heard of Tartaria? I think you mean Tartaria. I have heard about that. That's on our list to do. That's he's talking about the mud floods and the the um, the cover up that happened at the uh, beginning of the twentieth century. Jordan's random thoughts is the highlight of your week. I'm sorry to hear that. Fred Red Beans faster, faster, stop. I, so what I do in order to read these is I scroll up a little bit, and then for a, I get about a minute, minute and a half before YouTube just forces the thing to scroll. So I scroll up a little bit. So I can see Boomer McBoom saying older, dry ass. <laughs> That's funny. Stephen C., word of the day, camel hump or Gertie hump. Those are pretty good. Yeah, all right. So I know the ads are getting long, and that's my fault. Um, Jen writes the first pass on the ads, and they're, and they're fine, and they're short. The problem I'm having is the spots, this, the ad, the, I'm finding them entertaining. Like, I don't care about the sponsors. We you, we do that. We say the words they want us to say, but this I I, I just really enjoy the setups, and um, I have to stop enjoying it so much. Fewer jokes, just get the get the ad read. So I'm sorry about that, and I apologize in advance for next week. It's another long one, but we, we we're figuring it out. Kamikaze's having a flatulence problem. That's fine. That's fine. Kent Brewer and John Rhodes like the ads. I appreciate that. I'm glad. David Bendall says the ads are fine. It's that is <laughs> David likes it. Purposeful porpoise says the ads are okay. Rob Collins. Well, that's good to read because at, as I'm watching it live, I'm I I feel it. I I just I feel the I feel like the tension of it. Like I think they're funny, but I I start to get insecure. Like are people just like come on. But I didn't get a chance to read the chat tonight, so it's very possible that that was happening in there. 
Um, but I got home yesterday with the new ad and uh, open up the laptop to show it to Jen. Here's the finished product. And, and the first thing she says is, four minutes. I was like, I know, I, I know, and that's not supportive, and that hurt my feelings, but I know they're a little long. Albertori, do you want to mail me something, or are you talking to someone in the chat? If you want to send something to me, the address is on the channel under the About tab. It's that uh, North Carolina address. Straight Jacket 007, who does Hecklefish's voice? He does his own voice. Who does your voice? Aiden Hoyle wants this episode's t-shirt. Well, you know what? That sounds like an opportunity for a plug. All right. So as you know, we do um, every every episode gets their own shirt. And this week's is Lemoria, designed by SMK, a.k.a. Rob, the official artist of the, the Wife House. So that's what we're looking like. And his attention to detail is bananas. So, I mean, that's that's the right shape of Lemoria. And this is Heckle Tours, Inc. I, that's a lemur. Yeah. Yeah, so you can get those at shop.thewildfiles.com. And they're all limited edition. They're only, you have two weeks to, to grab one, and then they, they go away. Unless you're a Patreon member, then you get access to the back uh, catalog. Uh, and Astrum uh, gives me an opportunity to catch up if I'm late. With, with the ad reads. I mean, that's true. That's a good point. It You know, we have an extra three minutes, three and a half, four minutes for people to tune in. So I guess as David W. It does not seem like four minutes. It didn't seem long to me, but, you know, I'm entertained by it. So I just have to remember, you know, less comedy, more just take care of business. I mean, who's, who's texting me during the show? It's probably Gino. I know he's shaking his head now. Uh, no, Gino, it's it, it it's it's Auntie Janine and Robbie and the whole thing, and it's it's Cuz's birthday. You know, let's we got to shut that off. This live stream is so disappointing. Just so 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 disappointing. Northwoods, Jen, good to see you back. You had me at lemur. Uh, Tom Bund, does patron have to be on screen? No. Um, most people aren't. You know, so today we had about 80, 85 people. Everybody, everybody's crazy in chat. But you can also post, you know, images in there, videos, all kinds of stuff that you can't do here. And I think we had three people come up and talk today. You know, and it's just people asking questions. You know, we had one patron member starting his own YouTube channel, wanted a couple of uh, pointers, that kind of stuff. 515 Earl, the ads are good, but maybe just a tad long. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Uh, William Hegarty, we get more Hecklefish's backstory with the ads. That's exactly right. That's, a, that's exactly right. You're paying attention. SJ Washburn, Lou Shatner, please. I, I can't, he's still, he's in a contract. You know, you want to fire him, you tell him. Happy birthday, Mark Habercorn. John Cole liked the edit tonight. I appreciate that. I spent some extra time on it because I wasn't sure how strong the story was. So, um, so I put a lot of effort into the uh, into the VFX. A lot of compositing went in into tonight. KJ Artemis caught the Atlanta. Yeah, I caught it. When I'm when I'm previewing the when I'm previewing the the edit, I'm mostly looking at what's going on on screen. Because I hear my voice so much. I mean, I hear my voice for hours, and it's uh, it's ear it's annoying. Um, so my voice just sounds like sounds. So I'm looking at you know, is everything spelled right? I didn't even catch it until it was already posted, and then I watched it. I was like, yep, yeah, that's going to show up in the comments. Thirty five minute episode, and I got one syllable wrong. But you know, get get your comments in. Let me know. Peter F., how did they get through the Van Allen belt? Stand by. We'll get Jen to do some science communicating for you in just a, just a moment. Kenneth Rourke, how's the new studio? We'll get a studio update in a little while as well. We also need to check on Victoria, who hasn't eaten, I think, in, in four or five days. I'm, looking I'm, try I'm look trying to look down at her window to see, but she's mostly just shriveled up, and she's kind of shaky. She's just sh shriveled and shaky, so we'll, we'll see if she's going to make it or not. Um, 
and we'll make sure to get a link to her GoFundMe as soon as we get that. Thanks, Francois. Danny Ann, yeah, Shatner's, he's expensive. William Wallace, Jen blinded me with science. Science! Old is so Anunnaki, yeah, it's coming. That's on the list, I promise. I mean, I hear it. The phone is off. <laughs> hang, hang on, hang on. It's family. Yeah, let's see if that helps. I, I mean, I can't tell my my cousins no birthday wishes on Thursday nights. They they already think I'm an asshole. I can't can't do that. Yeah, so Anunnaki's coming. Um, that's that's one that needs a lot of attention. I want to make sure to get that one right. Alyssa says Jen needs a Van Allen belt shirt. That's a good idea. That's funny. Chamber of Secrets episode, Daniel. I, I don't know that one. Unless unless it's a Harry Potter reference. Sleepyhead 97, Project Bluebeam. That's a great idea. Well, I did an episode on Project Bluebeam. Check it out on the on the channel. It's there. No spoilers. Inspire her mind. We don't need a GoFundMe for Victoria. We need a GoFeedMe. Very good. Very nicely done. Andrew Steck, I want the shirt you wore in the ad. Which one did I wear in the ad? Was it Sidonia? I think it might have been Sidonia. Tonight I'm wearing the uh, Illuminati shirt for Mr. Naughty. A day's story. Anunnaki is such a cool story. It is. It's it's bananas. There's a few different twists, like a few different versions that I've heard. I'm gonna stick with the Zechariah Sitchin's version, which is that's the one that that I grew up with. So we'll stick with that. And um, I have a feeling that episode will do well. Every you know, everybody knows the Anunnaki, right? Wendy Olson Heckle Cult. Is that what I was wearing? I was wearing the Heckle Cult shirt. Um, I think that's a patron only. Let me look at the ladies. Is that a patron? Patron? That's patron only. Heckle cult's patron only. And and I know that's irritating. It's not a cash grab. I promise. It's just it's perks for the people who keep the channel going. Hi, Jen. You're waving at me. Yeah. Okay. So it's not Patreon. It's it's something else. All right. We'll add. We'll we'll bring her up in a little bit. And she can explain what's going on. So, it's, but the Patreon is, they're just perks for the members. It's not, it's not a cat. I'm not trying to, I mean, I'd love you to join, but I'm not trying to force it down your throat. I fear the Anunnaki crab cat. This explains to me being, being the oldest language in the world, which is true. It certainly is. I think I could be wrong. I don't think I am, but I think that they are the longest Oh, like the oldest civilization on the planet, like that has consistently been here. Not like, Sum I, I know Sumerians and all of that, but I mean, the Tamil, I think, have been here for longer than anybody else, which would explain why their language is so old. Uh, Daisy, no, it's not only, it's not only fans. Uh, I don't talk about my OnlyFans account on the stream. Titan Point. Randy watched Titan Point today. I don't know. I haven't seen. I haven't watched that one in a while. I don't know if it holds up. Cause um, yeah, this is. I, I wanted to ask you guys if there was an old episode you wanted to redo on. You know, with maybe some new information, a little bit cleaner edit, since, because I wasn't doing this full time back then. Then you know, I don't know how that you can let me know. I mean, I guess you could put it in the chat, but it's hard to follow. Maybe I can do a poll or something on the on the community tab. The comments, maybe that's what we'll do. Because that's how we got the, all the Hecklefish um, sayings that he says. By the way, everyone's getting these this week. These are showing up in the mail. Oh, don't what I say. I will be a strict but fair lord of these lands, and my serfs will come to idolize me. So those are those are landing in people's mailboxes today. So, um, so all the sayings that he says, that just came from the community. I just asked people what they wanted him to say, and 
I just took the top 10. So maybe we can do that with uh, with an old episode because I, I want to get one or two of those produced just to have them for emergencies. Joe Snow, Mel's Hole too. There's no more to that. I covered the entire story. So I don't so there's not more to add there. Tanya Dickinson, Coral Castle. I did uh I did one chapter on Coral Castle. I don't know if I can get a whole episode out of that one, Tanya. Especially because I debunk a good chunk of his story, which people don't like. Uh, Mark of the Nephilims. I covered the Nephilims quite a bit in the Giants episode about a month ago. Nebraska, because Gertie plushy, that, that's probably happening. That's probably going to happen. Bigfoot says you can always fit more in Mel's hole. That's that's <laughs> that that's true. Ah, cavity. All right, what's going on with the super chats? Hang on, hang on. Let's see. There, there we go. Quantum sledgehammer. One out of two. Haven't seen this before. Okay, this is like a Twitter thread. I don't see how people reaching Easter Island 10,000 years ago means there must be some lost continent. I'm sure they had nice boats and were all great swimmers. Wait, I'm getting new info. Okay, I like the way he did this. I like the pacing. Very nice. I'm being told Easter Island is not 2,300 feet from land, but actually 2,300 miles. Update, of course, is the lost continent of Lemuria. Maybe even Atlantis. Never doubted it. I, I lean that way, too. You know, as ancient civilizations and stuff, I'm not sure. I really, I don't know why there's not excavation happening off Cuba in Bimini, Yanaguni. I don't know why there's no, uh, is there no appetite for it? There's no pressure to do it. I mean, if you find a sunken city in the Bahamas that's at least 6,000 years old, no one's interested. I'm, I want to know what, what that was. For some reason, we, we're not doing it. Yanaguni's right there. So I tend to lean that way. And Easter Easter Island is the uh, the mainstream science says that they just they went there in, in boats. And it is there's it's just ocean around for thousands of miles. That's 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 some seamanship, I guess. MRF like the ad, I appreciate that. Darren Travis, they don't want to know the truth. Yeah, why? Why not? Uh, so that reminds me about going uh, about the truth. So coming up tonight, we have Gino Story Hour, of course, which almost began a little early, but I think I think we're settled down. Um, uh, Gino Victoria pulled some some cool videos that I have. I found a few myself. We have us. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen um, CIA officer retired John Ramirez talking about disclosure that this is all fairly organized. These steps. Um, he thinks there's a specific date, and he doesn't know the date, but the year I think he said was 2027. Because he he gave an interview in 2022, and he said. Five, about five years is going to be an event that's that that the government needs to get people ready for, you know, and he, and he, meaning everybody's got to get ready, not just for us. You know, if they said tomorrow aliens are real, we'd be like, well, of course we knew that for for everyone else. They have to get everybody ready for it. So um, so I have a clip from his interview coming up. We have an interesting uh, AI analysis of the crazy airplane lady, aka Tim, uh, Tiffany Gomez. This guy thinks that that it could be so, that they're different people. Like you saw the airplane video, and you saw her weird apology video. He did an analysis, and he thinks that they're two different people. And and this Tiffany's trying to grab some publicity. So we're going to show you that. I'm also going to show you a counter argument to that. And we've got. Um, Rep Burchett on News Nation talking about how they, whoever they are, will not, they're just stonewalling Congress. Congress, uh, he's even been asked, you're Congress. And he's like, that, they don't care who we are. It's the Pentagon. The Pentagon will not give us information. 
and a couple of interesting articles. I, I want I wanted to just read a quick article about next week's episode just to see what you think about it. So next week's episode is the theory that the Earth is a prison planet and our souls are constantly recycled here for nefarious purposes. It's kind of a dark episode. I got to do a little work on it to make it a little perkier. Um, but I have a little bit of that theory uh, coming up. If you want to stick around for that, Quantum Sledgehammer, we got you already. Blackbeard, longtime supporter of the channel, big fan of the show. Just got my hecklefishes yesterday. Got one for my mom as well. And the weight was worth a smile on her face. Well, it's nice to hear. The weight was long. The weight was a little bit long. But I appreciate you supporting. Blackbeard's been around a while. There's Chris. What's up with everyone ignoring Peru? It's not, um, I covered it a little bit when it was new, Chris. The the official story, so the Peru is the aliens, right? Essentially attacking a village. The official story is that it was illegal miners harassing the uh, the people in the village. And I hear that, I'm like, okay, I, you know, and they were wearing alien suits or whatever. Okay, I buy that. But they were also wearing jetpacks. So that's part of the explanation. And I hear that. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Where do you even get it? Can you even get a jetpack? Um, that's not rhetorical. Like, can you get, well, how do you get a jetpack? Ron Klotzer, uh, AJ, could the sunken continent of uh, Zealandia be part of Lemuria? Finally got my application in. Help me fulfill my destiny. Um, Zealandia, that's definitely a real thing. Could it be part of Lemuria? Maybe. Let's take a quick look. Give me a second here. Let's get to Google. All right. We need the sat. All right, so we can see, always technical difficulties. We can see the Zealandia, the plateaus. The thing is, Lemuria is allegedly supposed to be here. Really, clouds this low? Um, Lemuria is supposed to be here. So, you know, I don't know what it could be. I found a, a really cool YouTube video. I think I might have linked it. If I didn't, I'll link it later. Where um, this geologist goes through all the sunken continents where they could be, which was interesting. But he also did what the Earth looked like at various points in history, like before the last flood. Like all this, just millions of square miles of land that was exposed that he covered like um if you remember from the episode uh, marisha was discovered in here so all of this was exposed oh you seen that yeah all this was exposed all this all these plateaus are exposed we've got uh the sri lanka bridge which is kind of exposed now, but all this was just, was just land. So it's interesting episode, an interesting uh, video. I'll link that later. Oh, while we're over here, where is it? Ah, okay. So Easter Island, just, just, just nowhere. I don't know how they took boats there, man. Uh, there's Ron Got You. Uh, Mike and Murph is there, big supporter of the channel. A little pizza money for the crew. Oh, any chance to see an episode on the Black Pyramid of Alaska? Have a great weekend. That's probably on the list. I've been reading something about the Black Pyramid of Alaska that it's, you know, it's it's all kind of bonkers stories, but it's it's a good one that it's, it is currently or did at one point put out enough energy to power all of Canada. So uh, so we've got that on the list. That's, that's an interesting story. Appreciate that, Mike. There's Black Canvas, Life Wanderers. You know, I went to Atlantis-themed restaurant, and I was so happy to try it. However, 
it had already gone under. Ha <laughs> ha oh, ha! Oh, 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 my spleen! Oh, you're gonna rupture my spleen! Very good, nicely done. Of course, Jen is laughing down there. She loves a pun. Uh, there's Jeffrey, twenty-five dollars. Holy mackerel! You see what I did there? Thanks for dropping a couple of shekels on me, human. <laughs> Greetings, programs. I guess is that a uh, is that a simulation theory comment? Because we're all just sentient programs. Are we even sentient? I don't know if we are. Great episode tonight. Thanks, Jeffrey. I appreciate the support. I. Is that the Mystery Science Theater robot? I can't tell. Gino, take a look at that. MS, yeah. Uh, Antonio RC, have you done an episode about flat earthers? Well, that would be an episode on the people who believe, which I won't, I'm not going to attack anybody. But um, I haven't done flat earth because YouTube doesn't like channels that cover that stuff, even if I'm going to debunk it. Because um, it's risky because if, let's say, it would get a context warning anyway, and nobody would see the video regardless. But even if I complained and someone watched it, you know they're not going to watch a whole 30-minute thing. They'll watch halfway and be like, oh, this guy's a flat earther. Kill it. When I get to the end and I say, well, here's why it's probably round. It's just too risky to do. There's a few conspiracies that are too risky to do. The moon landing was tricky, but I think I threaded the needle on that one. Um, I wasn't, it wasn't so, like, I wasn't really selling it as true. I tried to be cute with it and I, and we, we've avoided the, uh, the censorship gods for now. Hecklefish liver oil. Modern audience probably round. You know, I don't want to, I got to leave a little mystery there. Stephen Garner, flat is not a shape. That's a good point. Gimbal, thank you, four ninety nine. KCMO River Market checking in. Great episode as always. Shout out, Jen. There you go. Shout out to Jen. She's she's giving you the goat. That's the goat, by the way, if you're not into 80s hair, hair metal rock. Uh, Faith K, but how do we feel about today's moon landing? Um, talking about India landing on the south, the south pole of the moon today. Um, I tweeted out that I'm... Happy that India landed on the moon because now at least Bollywood can get in on the action. F in the chat is a flat mooner. That's whole part of the thing, right? That the moon is a projection. I mean, there are parts of the flat earth theory that are compelling. They really are, especially if you just like watch bit shoot for three hours, you know, with a, a, a cocktail or two too many. You get up from there, like the Earth is. Pro it might be. It's it's de it's definitely flat. Um, but there are some parts of it that don't quite hold up. Uh, Mason Dean seventy three. We need a Rumble channel for uncensored episodes. Yeah, it, and I will do that. I would probably put those on Patreon though to give the the members a perk. The issue that I have is I just don't have time. I'm constantly running late on them. So if I can get a chunk of time, I will do a couple of episodes that are, you know, too hot, too hot for YouTube. Jimbo Logo wants Jen to explain the Van Allen belt. That's coming. Um, Lord Crab Cat is here. AJ, blink twice if Mark Zuckerberg is holding you hostage in his sweet baby Ray's saucer. Jason Spur, like, AJ, why can't a hecklefish swim down and tell us what's under the ocean? Well, he's a freshwater fish, so he would need an immersible to do that, which gives me an idea for a, a commercial. Yellow Umbrella Homebrew is back. I got my hecklefish plushie a few days ago, and he's awesome. As always, awesome episode tonight. Cheers. Hashtag Patreon member. Hashtag winning. Thanks, Yellow Umbrella home, Homebrew. I'm over here. This is where the chat is, by the way. And when there's me pausing, I'm just trying to read and, and catch up. Jamie Gill, younger wet ass. Kelly A, plasma moon, reshot structure, hollow earth. Well, I did the hollow earth, plasma moon. I don't think I know that one. Reshot structure I haven't covered because uh, Corsetti's already done. How many videos has Corsetti done on reshot in Atlantis? 15? No, I'm joking. And Jimmy, I know you watched the show. I'm just joking. 
He, Jimmy's awesome, but he's, he's covered it a few times and I, I can't cover it as well as he does. I know Gino's signaling, but you know, this is the top of the show. This is, uh, we got pizza money programs. Where are we? We're younger. Uh, okay. There's, there's Seamus M for $25. Well, I'll be a son of a fish. That's a nice tip. Hashtag younger wet ass. Baltic Sea Anomaly episodes, a small town girl. That's a good su suggestion. I don't know if we get a whole episode out of it, but we can maybe do, you know, weird things in the ocean because there's plenty of those. I have a, I have a, a nice uh, UFO video tonight of a craft just descending into the ocean. Someone shot it from the beach. It's a, it's a crazy one. Uh, Bright Insight for Eye of Africa. Yeah, that's Chris Eddie's channel. Hecklefish in outer space shirt. That's a good idea. He's been in outer space a couple of times. Uh, did you guys see his David Bowie cover on his channel? You know, Hecklefish has his own channel, right? So if um, if he sings like a, a clip of a song, usually the whole song or a big chunk of it is on his channel. If he, most of his jokes that bother me are land over there. City of El Dorado episode says Bigfoot. That's pretty good. It's the search for gold. I was looking into that last week. I don't remember why. I don't remember what I was researching, but I was looking, maybe because I was looking for lost cities. That's probably what it was. El Dorado is one of those, you know, famous cities that's supposed to be, have a bunch of gold or made of gold. Ron Klotzer says, lube your dry ass. Always good suggestion. There's Michael Chichab for $99.99. I get pretty freaky. He's a super freak. The kind of fish you dream about. You got freaky dreams. I get pretty kinky. He's a super freak. But only if you pay me. Gotta pay the fish. I need a tip. I need a tip. I need a tip from you. And you. And you, human. You and you and you hit the hit the hit the hit the super chat super chat hit the button now. Lawyer to lifter here. Love the show, AJ and team. Thank you. You actually inspired me to leave the worst job and follow my passion all over social media. Lawyer to lifter. All right, check out Lawyer to Lifter. And uh congratulations for leaving your job. It's uh working in a job you hate is very depressing. I think we've all been there. Very depressing. So good for you for getting out. And thanks for the for the great tip. So that's lawyer to lifter. And I don't know what that means. He's an attorney and now he's doing muscle shows. That's my guess. Chance maybe for $10. A great show as always. Why files con win? I don't know. I I I avoid I'm avoiding the Y Files Con for as long as possible. That's the Y Files convention. You know, I I don't um I don't get out into the in, into the world much, and uh, Jen's down there laughing. Yeah, I don't get out in the world much, and uh, and it's fine. It's actually fine. The wife isn't a big fan of it, but I think it's okay. Cute little TV for ten. I got my two heck of a plushies today. They're so cute. The teeth, though. The teeth. I'm seeing pictures on uh on Twitter of just this. Just go on. Let's get a focus. Look, I mean, they they look and feel real. Yeah, halitosis. So I'm glad you got the uh, the plushie. Igzy, maybe Khan is an introvert's nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Cody, Cody Ceiling, I think you look cool AF in those blue light glasses. Well, I appreciate it, Cody. This is not. I, this was never meant to be a fashion statement. This is just because I'm in bright lights and there's a magnification so I can read the chat. Small town girl, he smelled the teeth, L-M-A-O. You would have too. You would have smelled the teeth, right? Dirthead is here. Sorry, missed the episode. I'm sure it was great as usual. Here for the oh, After Files. I still have the AF in my mind. In my mind, I will watch and thumbs up after. We never get many thumbs up on these. 
I can't tell where we are now, but we'll get 100,000 views and five thumbs up. It's very depressing when you're insecure like I am. And there's Ron is back. No, I like the way you tip me. No diggities. Just tip me up. And this is for Gino's pre-roll for his half-hour story hour. I'm sure he appreciates that. There's Chumley for 10. I uh, apologize for that. It's Yikes. Scary. You call this a live stream? How are you not embarrassed? I am. Watched your New Year's Eve video. Realized you're in Dallas-Fort Worth. Howdy, neighbor. Check out Rockwall, Texas. Rockwall, definitely not natural. Great show tonight. We'll definitely check that out. We're no longer in the great state of Texas, Chumley. We have moved to Las Vegas. But, uh, but liked it in Texas very much. Great people there. There's Julie Alsop. I don't know. I can't tell if Julie's wearing a cowboy shirt or if that or if she's a superhero. I'm going to go with superhero. Love your work and love the new lyrics. That is Martin. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say his last name. Mar uh, uh, from the audience, a guy named Martin just threw a, a, a lyric track over the um, our outro song, and I just thought it was so well done and so funny that I just threw it in the credits. But I'm glad you liked it. Oh, she's Captain Marvel. Okay. I thought Captain Marvel was a, was a man. Uh, Jen says no. No, she's uh, clearly not. I'm thinking about the comics. Well, I appreciate that, Julie Alsop. There's Andrew and Natasha. Some shekels for the heckle. Lots to Lots of love to the Waffle House team from the land of the long white cloud. I've never heard it called that. That's cool. Cool name. What's going on in the chat? Roman Stone gender swap. Yeah. Shazam. Chase, he, he is in the comics. Uh, Brash Fink, Captain Marvel was a man. He died. And look, as I was talking about the comics, I knew that the chat would get involved because people who who read comics or they're serious about it. So I didn't mean to offend. So yeah, I can't read any of those. I can't read that. Can't read that. Uh, Mr. B's house. Can you give us any hints about what you're working on? Maybe we could study a bit before the show. Well, next week is going to be the solar recycler. Let me, um, I'll cover this article for you. And then we can uh, bring up the team. All right. This is the theory of the prison planet. From the moment that humans were able to think and ponder, we have wondered about our origin. Where do we come from? Why are we here? A new theory seeks to answer that very question, the theory of the prison planet. As science has developed... New theories have popped up left and right, seeking to answer the ultimate question of the origins of mankind. While nearly every culture on the face of the planet has sought to explain our presence on Earth, science has taken the reins in recent years to develop a possible hypothesis. With this, we get theories such as the ever-popular simulation hypothesis. Recently, the theory of the prison planet has begun to gain traction. Developed by American ecologist Dr. Ellis Silver, the prison planet theory states that the origin of humankind is not found here on Earth, but elsewhere. Silver contends that we are not an evolutionary product of this world, but rather visitors that found ourselves on Earth relatively recently in the, ge in the geographical time scale. Uh, Silver goes on to argue that we may have come to Earth anywhere between tens of thousands of years ago to hundreds of thousands of years ago before breeding with Earth with earlier developed species such as the ne Neanderthals, causing us to become the hybrid species we know as humans today. And there's evidence of that in our DNA. If you're anything like me, this theory seems a bit far-fetched. It should be noted, however, while Silver's theory sounds like the ravings of a madman, he's anything but. Rather than being the usual tinfoil hat-wearing enthusiast, Silver is a respected scientist. And he can't, I can't read the rest with a free account, but that's all right. I have a paid medium account, stand by.
with this one. Let's try it. Yes. Well, it looks like it looks like it's not meant to be. I'll see if I could sign in and get the rest for you. I could just summarize. Here we go. All right, Silver is more than willing to present his findings regarding the prison planet theory. According to Silver, it all starts with the fact that we as a species really don't belong here on Earth. As Silver acknowledges, humans are unlike any other species found here on Earth in terms of both mental capacity and intelligence. There is, in fact, no species on Earth that can contend with humankind's ability to create, philosophize, and advance in a technological sense. And that's that Silver's only argument to suggest that humankind originated elsewhere in the universe. Silver also states that humans possess many physiological characteristics that suggest we didn't originally develop here on Earth. In fact, Silver lists a variety of differences between us and nearly every other life form found on Earth. According to Silver, these differences can be observed as early on as the beginning of our lives. The first example Silver offers is the fact that human mothers experience both complications and pain during natural childbirth that is not witnessed anywhere else in elsewhere in the animal kingdom. Let me look at the ladies down there. Is childbirth painful, they say? Uh, they're saying they don't know. That's probably thanks to Demerol. So he goes on to say that human babies are basically helpless for years after birth and develop excruciatingly slowly when compared to the rest of the animal kingdom, which is true. Right? You ever see like a horse or a, or a deer being born? It just falls out and runs to eat hay. Babies don't do that. That'd be fun, though. That'd be funny. Silver goes on to note that as humans age, we, we display certain anomalous traits that we don't share with other members of the animal kingdom, like we're prone to developing chronic illnesses. We are weak to the impact of the sun. We're the only species that experiences sunburn. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I need to look into that. Um, and the range of frequencies we can hear is relatively low compared to the rest of the animal kingdom. And also the frequencies that we can see is low. Uh, Silver goes on to cite that the reason that humans are so prone to back issues is being the gravitational difference between the Earth and our home world. All right. This, the, he, so he thinks that humans were brought here between 60,000 and 200,000 years ago. So where did we come from? Silver has his own theories. According to him, it's a strong possibility that Earth serves as a prison planet for holding prisoners who found themselves incapable of integrating into the normalcy of society. According to Silver, it's highly possible that our ancestors were exiled here on Earth due to their own indiscretions, leaving them to be forgotten about before they continuously began breeding with Neanderthals, calling it the prison planet theory. I just, uh, just entertaining to me. You drop a bunch of prisoners here, and the first thing they do is like, sexy Neanderthals. So it's not all bad to be here. That's weird to me. Um, so he Silver goes on to add some weight to his theory by stating that our ancestors may have had overseers at one time. These overseers became gods in the minds of our ancestors. Anunnaki. He even suggests that the UFOs that we see today may be our overseers coming back to take a look at us and see how far or little we have progressed on our prison planet. It's a very interesting, fun theory, and that's going to be part of next week's episode, along with this recycling of the souls. There is Nard Basket for $100. They got me in collections and garnishing my wages, too. Got guppy support payments, alimony at the wazoo. They repoed my car, I'm living in a jar like a bum. I know that you got money, so why the hell don't you give me some? Mm -hmm. Tip the fish today.
please tip the fish today. He was mostly on key for that one. I'm impressed. Nard Basket, greetings from the Pacific Northwest. Would love to see something about the crazy UFO stuff around Mount Rainier. I've personally had three sightings, one super close with a chrome cylinder. Woke up with an implant in my wrist. No joke. Thanks for what you guys do. Um, I don't, I'd like to see an x-ray of that. What about you guys? Gino would like to see that x-ray. Yeah. Nard Basket. He's muted. Yeah, it's uh, I know he's he's still working on on his ASL. Let me go around the horn. Victoria, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. And so, can so what what's going on? Have you had food? Yes, uh, it was a three day fast with some of the mods. There were four of us that did the three day fast. Did you force them? I didn't. It wasn't my idea. <laughs> Why would you do that? It was supporting, and it was actually kind of cool. <laughs> Jenny, did you support as well with a three-day fast? <laughs> did you just snigger? You, you sniggered. I think we should just is wait. She mute too? Yeah, she is. I think we should just wait. We'll just wait. As far as live streams go, this one is, this one is terrible. <laughs> Did what is she, something? What what, we, why, is she, why is she signaling to us? <laughs> <laughs> I, can, well, I can't do anything. So, Gina, what's story hour tonight? Uh, tonight, we got a special one. Um, it's about a cryptid in England. Many cryptids. A whole bunch of cryptids. A whole bunch of cryptids. Okay. Yeah. Is Gina's story hour coming up? Now Hi. you hear me? Yes. I don't what know, happened? man. I don't know what happened. Discord, it's because we were doing the Discord thing before this, and Discord always screws up my computer. <laughs> How, so how's the studio coming along? I haven't seen it. Uh, I think I've been there once in three months. It's amazing. It's amazing. I can't wait for you to... I mean, you're going to be there. We're moving you over this weekend. Well, allegedly... Do you see your boy sleeping on the big Where are you? Or on the fuzz? <laughs> Cat. Shona fan, four for $10. Love the episode. Clearly, we need more ocean exploration as opposed to space. If J.C. Brown was real, sounds like another case of missing 411. Yeah, so J.C. Brown, I don't know if how much of that story is real, but the, the news reports about him are real. So they had – so 80 people – did think they were going to search for this treasure under the mountain. Um, yeah, so I don't, it doesn't sound real, but, but it was. It sounds like another case. Yeah, so he disappeared on. Man, I'd love to, I'd love to find that, that entrance to the caverns. Kyle Johnson's there. Happy birthday to my nephew, Henrik, just turned six. Aww. Thank you, Wife Files, for talking about the things that actually matter and are interesting. Ain't never gonna stop. You're welcome. Happy birthday, uh, Henrik. Happy birthday, Henrik. Jen, did you want to sing to him? No, thanks. All right. There's Richard Bramlett. That's a AKA hybrid, right? That's he's the hybrid from Discord. The, the hybrid. That's Bramlett. He's very well known out in the world. And if you come across him out in the wild, you can take a selfie with him. He'll sign whatever you have. He always keeps a Sharpie on him. He's got his headshots. <laughs> got a new agent. <laughs> unicorn, great episode, unicorn. And there is Haunted Dolphin 5. AJ, I know you're the only one that can tell the Madman Mike Markham story and give it justice. I'm going to keep recommending it until I wear you down. No need to haunt a doll that's on the list and that's coming fairly soon, right? We have that. Well, yeah. Fairly soon-ish. Well, it's, it's, is it scheduled? It's, it's scheduled, but we are scheduled out till February. So it depends on your definition of soon. Hanna Dahl, can you wait until February? January. She can wait. She can wait. She'll be fine. 
And there's Shannon. Thank you for the support. New lyrics to the end credit song. Please post, post a lyrics video so we can sing along. Camels love to dance. That's my favorite part. Uh, Gertie loves to dance because she is a camel. And camels love to dance. Something like that. Camels on the dance floor. It makes me laugh because I picture it. Jenny, do you picture a camel dancing when you hear that? Of course. Of course. I was almost afraid to watch today for fear of a new puzzle keeping me up until 2 a.m. Sorry about that, Shannon. I hope you solved it. Um, if you want to know how the puzzle is solved over on the Backstage channel, I did a walkthrough of all the different, all the pieces of the puzzle, if you want to check that out. But it's definitely spoilers um, if you haven't played with that yet. And uh, also clips from this, I was going to say show, but this is, this is not a professional thing. But clips from this are on Backstage as well. Jenny, you feel like reading for, for a minute and I'll get back sure. uh, and we'll do a couple of weird videos, UFO stuff, and then a uh, Gino story hour. Let's do it. All right. But I, okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, Alexis Omnis for 20 pounds. I can tell you the truth of our existence, what aliens are controlling the world, and much more. My granddad was in the first Freemason Internet Lodge, and I know more than everyone on the truth of everything. Well, okay. That's that's a bold statement, Alexis. You can join Discord, and I'm sure Gino would love to hear all about yeah. this. That sounds Discord, amazing. Gino. Absolutely. Please join Discord. Uh, uh, you can talk to us in the voice chat or send me a DM. My DMs are open on, on Discord. John Vincenz, you say that, Gina. John Vincenzo. Vincenzo. For $10. Hey, AJ, can you do an episode about the great Mutato? I don't know that one. Uh, I don't know. We'll write it down. Send us a tip. Send it on the tips line. Not tips money wise. You just did that, but tips like, hey, here's a tip for an episode. That'd be awesome. The great Mutato is it was from the um, the X Files, right? Was that a monster from the X Files? I don't know. Jeff Wallace for five dollars got my heckle plushie today. Yay! You're right, the teeth are wild. The teeth are crazy. They are crazy, but I love them so. We're going to be doing heckle slippers, and they're also going to have teeth. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, let's see. The, ed the Edge 3 for $5. First time catching your show live was introduced to you about a week ago and have binged most of it in the last week. Wow. That is a big binge. Thank you for that. And thank, welcome to the, the crazy gang that is this channel. Fantastic. Uh, Davina Weaver for $5. Seen the documentary on Disney Plus called UFOs Investigating the Unknown? I'm on episode three. Very interesting. Also great show tonight. I've not seen that yet. I haven't seen that one. I watched the Showtime one um, last year. It was really good. I think J.J. Abrams maybe produced that. That was pretty good. We'll have to check it out. All right. We've got um, – so this this guy thinks that um, – hang on. Let me, let, me, let me get that clear. This guy thinks the, the, the alien the, – uh, the crazy lady from the plane and the apology video are different. Hold on. Did you say crazy lady? We can't call her crazy yet. She I'm knows what she's talking lady. about. In person. Well, That's, let's ask no AI. Answer. And by AI, I mean a face recognition neural network. See, people cannot recognize someone when they change their makeup, but AI can. How do I know this? Well, let's just say I've done some experiments. And look at AI pick my face out of all these bald Asian males. If you're thinking, well, that was obvious. That's not me. This is me. Oh. We'll gather up a bunch of pictures of the crazy airplane lady. And we'll gather up a bunch of pictures of Tiffany. We'll run the faces through a neural network, and then we'll calculate the distance between the two people. The magic number we're looking for is 0 0.6. If the distance between the two people is less than 0 0.6, we'll say that's the same person. 
If it's greater, that's a different person. 1.06, I'm really surprised about this. When I started making this video, I was expecting the exact opposite. So that, the AI is saying that is definitely two different people. I mean, look at the part on her hair, look at her eyebrows. It seems to be the same person. So I go back and I get another video of the airplane lady. I run it through again, and now it's 1.01. .01. One thing that might affect the accuracy is the quality of the images, but a value of one is just so far away. Remember my face versus these other dudes and look at what a distance of one means. Now that I have these numbers and I'm being completely honest, I don't think these are the same person. I think Tiffany Gomez made herself to look like the airplane lady and is trying to do some kind of publicity stunt. Publicity stunt. They really don't look like the same people. They don't. They don't but we have the body cam footage from the um, from the officers and all that stuff. So it's it's definitely the same person. But let's just do a quick little recap here. Viral on the internet for all of the wrong reasons. I'm telling you, I'm getting the f off, and there's a reason why I'm getting the f off. Now the quote crazy plain lady is apologizing for the rant posted on TikTok. First and foremost, I want to take full accountability for my actions. They were completely unacceptable. Thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime. How did you like that apology? Does, does she seem nice? No. Well, she's not. So as she so we we have the guy who she thought was whatever. So she shoved him, assaulted him. Oh. This is in here. Officers found the man. Gomez was accused of hitting the one who, quote, wasn't real. Uh, no, it's okay. Oh, yeah, she just pushing me like, are you at the part of the, uh, I don't know what she, who's talking to the, in the phone. So I was just sitting right here and she just got me. Did she say anything before that to you? Uh -uh. No. No. Are you to her? No. Are you okay? You didn't say anything. She just came out screaming. You sure? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so he's asking, do you want to press charges against her for assault? I don't know what I would do in the situation. She was hammered. She just, uh, she doesn't come across very nice. No. She's she's a mean drunk, as we're going to see. Anyway. This guy's cool, and he's like, nah, she's... I'm fine, but the officer's like, "Are you sure we can we can get this popping?" So that assault mean what does that mean? Assault it means to uh, attack to fight somebody to you know push them or to, to bring some kind of harm, bodily injury. Right, right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. No, no, I should be just. just you don't want to do anything about it? Mm -hmm. It's okay. 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 All right. Do okay. you mind if I get your information real quick? She's lucky. She is. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to see how, how lovely she is? Sure. Mm -hmm. I believe you. Here she is outside the area. No. Okay, we're here so did, you, did you make physical contact no with somebody and she said no? Physical contact with nobody. Okay. nobody. I've had it all on video the whole entire time. So. Okay. Can you give us your touches around? So now I've touched, I've had physical contact with people. So, so now I have to. Can you put us on that disturbance call? What's she doing? FaceTiming with a, a miserable boyfriend? What's she, who's she talking to? I get to go deal with that. But I'm going to keep it on video the entire Please time. Please keep it on, and honey. The second officer approaches a from a different direction. So, what's your plan now? Nothing. I'm waiting to see what happens. What do you mean? What do you mean? See what happens with what? What's your plan for here? She said, just wait, wait till you see what happens. And then he goes through and he, he's calmly saying, you need to get out of here. 
ha, you know, how are you going to get out of there? Because obviously she can't drive. So she's going to get an Uber. And now we've got a couple of other options. So she wants to do, she's going to request Uber. Okay. So the, the gentleman that you allegedly make contact with, hey, she's not to press charges or anything like that. Okay, so I don't know if you could hear it. He said the person you allegedly made contact with, you say that he's not going to press charges. Here's her reaction. Just please be considering, okay? You're in the state of Texas, and because somebody is unwanted, okay, considering class the assault, you could go to jail for it, you could get ticketed for it, okay? I can tell you are already having a bad day. We're not trying to make it any worse. So whenever you get out of here. My dad's a cop. It's been a little more than a month. Now, this is because of um, body cams and, you know, just the, the younger generation. Because, old, you know, in the old days, this is not how this would completely go down. Well, you know? no, but it, also if her dad's a cop. She wouldn't talk to the cops that way. No. She wouldn't, wouldn't. tell them to get the F out of her face. Get the F out of my face. That That's when it's like, okay, you know what? You kind of come down, maybe sober up with us. But uh, but they're on camera. So that's... Has posted a video on Twitter. That's her sincere apology. She's just, she takes full responsibility. Because I want to take full accountability for... If you want to be fully accountable, then deal with that assault charge. Yeah, she just comes across as. Yeah. That's a crazy lady. Okay. Um, I got a couple of UFO videos if you want to see. I mean, I like UFO videos. Let's see them. Uh, oh, here's here's a couple of just quick ones from uh, Gino and Victoria. This one. What? Burgess, what is that? Burgess walking on air. <laughs> Glitch in the matrix. I can't, I can't explain that one. There are a lot of glitch in the matrix type videos like that it's where birds glitch. are just stuck in the air, not moving. I, I've seen some where they're just like mid flight frozen. That's crazy. And Gino found this one. Um, what they found on Mars. What is that? Down. Stand back. Wait, go back. They will. Look at that. What I is don't, that? I, I still think they're faking the color. I think mm -hmm. they are still faking the color there. Um, I mean, we can't see it that good on this because it's not very big, but like if, if it was, it, it, it does not look natural. I'm gonna I'm gonna color correct this, and we'll we'll take a look at it. Some so, somewhat recent. It must be about uh, three thousand feet up now. I'd say. Wow! Look at that. Nobody's going to believe us except I got it on film, huh? <laughs> I keep losing it. There it is. What was interesting was when it, when he, oh crap, when, it, when he loses focus, it reminds me of the gimbal video. Yeah. There goes a jet oh. right by it, but well, a little higher. There's the jet, and there's the saucer. Oh, crap. I got a better view of it now.
Scooby, Mars in similar colors as Earth. Yeah, that's true. Um, I covered that on, a, on an episode if you want to check it out. I did color correction on a bunch of NASA photos. It's crazy. Your atmosphere is not pink. I wish we could have size. Wow. I don't know what this is. It must be about uh, 3,000 feet up now, I'd say. I don't know what kind of this is. Wow, look at that. Nobody's going to believe us except I got it on film, huh? <laughs> I keep losing it. There it is. The jet. There. There's the jet. And there's the... Hmm. Here's, um, here was a, a good one. I think this is a, a craft going into the ocean. Yeah, there it is. What? I mean, that is not, that is a controlled descent. That's not the SpaceX ones, right? Uh, no, I have a SpaceX one. Okay. And if you guys can debunk any of these. Yeah. Indrid Chill says Victoria is glowing. <laughs> Something to do with that fasting. It was the fasting. That's what was nice. the first thing you ate when the fast ended? Well, that was the problem. I ate a Philly cheese steak, three fried cheese sticks, and five gummies. What did you do after the after you had diarrhea? <laughs> Died. Oh my god! Jenny did the master cleanse for like 10, 14 days or something. 19. I did. It, I did it for thirty back in the day. Jen, do, what, can you describe the master cleanse? You guys know what that is? It's stupidity is what it is. You drink water with maple syrup and lemon juice and cayenne pepper three times, well, all day, because you're starving. And then in the morning, you drink salt water they call it a salt water flush. They say when you, when you drink the salt water, don't leave the house for like an hour. <laughs> you should just drink it in the bathroom, basically. <laughs> and you do that over and over and over. And it's not pleasant. And I think, I think you did that for like a crash weight loss thing. And, and after the fast, you, you gained a pound and a half. Something like that. <laughs> like, how is this possible? Like, it was just torture yourself for no reason. I would like obsessively watch the Food Network. And I just, why are you right. doing that to yourself? <laughs> um, can, can we debunk this one? Chief Wahoo did it 14 days. D Man says, yeah, that crap doesn't work. I don't think so either. I think your body goes, uh oh, I gotta hold on to all my all my stores. No, if you don't eat, you will lose weight. <laughs> well, yes, but it also like yeah, I don't know. Bigfoot recommends just doing a one meal a day fast. So Jim, do you want to start that one? That's intermittent. No. <laughs> that's it takes no. a lot of time. <laughs> here's the um, here's UFOs checking out SpaceX. You'll see it. So I get, this looks like it's from the news, even. There it is. I don't know. I think it could just be a plane. 
could be a lot of things. That one's not very conclusive. That one's not conclusive? Well, take a look at this one. Tell me if this is a plane. There's the UFO um, checking out a volcano. Weird. That was no plane. No. No. I think this is just from a. Oh my god! Right when I hit record, at that second, the object was passing straight over the top of my house, and what I got on tape was a disc-shaped object. Yeah, this can't be recent because there's interlacing on the frames, which means that's VHS. Was a disc-shaped object turned on its side with a dome this way, the, ob the bottom part this way. I don't way, think it's fake, it flies though. over my house. It suddenly does a U-turn and then jumped about a mile and a half in like a matter of a half a second to where I couldn't even see it anymore. Yeah, 2000. So I started... All right, I've got one more, and then we'll listen to John Ramirez. Here is a, uh, I've got a couple more. This is um, UFOs in the in the ocean. Now that I believe. What is this? That's a skate. Is it? I I mean I haven't. That well that that looks like AI. A squid. I mean CGI. Yeah. That's CGI? That looks like CGI. Or it's a cool squid. Yeah. There are animals. That looks like CGI. But there are <clears throat> animals down there that, that have, like, luminescent lighting. Yeah, absolutely. Someone here. Was he was looking for satellites. And the movement of these objects, we've seen this type of movement from the ISS videos, I remember. We've just got a bunch of tiny craft moving. Yeah, that's weird. It's like a microscope <laughs> viewing. It does. Photographer pointed a laser at the object. Oh, here's another one right here. You see him? Flying right over our heads. Pointing it right at him. And now he's turning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you see him? Yeah, I just, it just flashed. I'm, I'm, Lasering on or Adam. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't muzzle flare the aliens. No. Don't not. don't do that. Don't flag the aliens. Kirtland Air Force Base, if you remember, that's that's the uh, that's the Doug Benowitz Richard Doty case. This is a this is a plane over Kirtland and there's a, like a cube or box shaped UFO tailing it right next to it. Can you see it? I see it. It's like attached to the back. It almost looks attached to the back of the plane. It's like a dingleberry. You have yes. a dingleberry. It's like a dingleberry. But I don't get the impression that that's fake. What is it? I mean, there's no... The debate's over. That the debate, No one thinks UFOs are fake at this point, right? The, the debate is over. Are Anthony, there still people out there... Are there people out there saying it's not real? 
Well, Anthony Bissett said Klingon, but spelled it with a C. <laughs> Klingon. Um, like, I don't know that... Like, there are... I, I feel like, yes, there are unidentified flying objects or right. unidentified aerial phenomena. Right. But... Right, I didn't say aliens. Right. right. But I when you say things like... Everybody knows that UFOs are real now, right? It's like, well... Yes, but people assume you mean that there are little green men. No, I didn't around. say that. I know you did. Uh, we're, we're kind of preparing. Here's the, retired. Uh, I guess it says right there, John Ramirez. Why? Why all this stuff is coming out now? U.S. population, at least, and uh, by extension, the world population, and to that reality that there is something, there is a presence here, and that we need to explain this presence because if they show up and we continue to do what we did before previous decades and this show up there will be mass panic but if you understand that though these are real and we have five years from 2022 or maybe now four years uh if they come in 2027 uh to, to, for for the u.s government to prepare the people about what is up there and in many ways i think uh, the word got out uh within the government that they're showing up in 2027 and uh we better be prepared and and if not there's going to be a lot of explaining to do um and so i think that dialogue has happened within uh inside the government in certain areas inside the government that we need to prepare and that's why in 2017 uh that set a clock of 10 years and why lou elizondo uh earlier in this year said you know just find a hobby for five years and uh you know it'll all be out in five years and he said that this year so that's 2027. okay huh. and i would say i've heard 2027 in a kind of an official capacity that i can't reveal so i think um i i would say that people in the government are aware of something happening and that there's limited time uh, a few more years to prepare the people and that's what's ramping up uh, this acceleration uh, from the previous seven decades of not even acknowledging it to now we, we are acknowledging it at a faster and faster pace. It's coming. Hi, Chad Chambers. I see you. Somebody said fake bots in the chat. Um, you can't even comment in the chat unless you've been a subscriber for five weeks. Yeah, so, no, no, bots, no bots in our chat. No bots. A new push. Uh, maybe we don't have time to cover this video now. This is a few minutes long. But it's a, it's a follow-up interview with um, with Rep uh, Burchett, who's kind of, kind of spearheading this in the House. It was sort of a depressing interview because if you remember the hearings – he was kind of excited, right? He's a guy's cracking jokes and he's excited to learn. In this interview, which I think is yesterday, he said pretty much, yeah, we asked and they won't tell us. And I don't know who the, the anchor is, but he said, well, you're Congress. You just just tell them. And, and he says, uh, we did and we don't expect them to do anything. Just... He claimed that the that sixty percent of the Pentagon's budget is is unaccounted for and 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 the things that the, the Pentagon does, the rest of us would go to jail for. Well, when you make the rules. But that's the thing is they don't make the rules. Pentagon doesn't make the rules. We make the rules. Burchett makes the rules. Yes, but if they don't hold them to that, it's like you can say, well, they should tell us. They don't. Well, you're Congress. Well, they're not telling us. Well, then you send right. people to jail. Like, you can't just kind of go, well, they're just not telling us, so I guess that's it. <laughs> that's, you know, that's that's deep state. That's the government within the government where where you, where this is an this is an event that, that that I hope everybody realizes that the people that we elect, including the president, are not really in charge. 
And if you if you follow Deep State and read books on it and watch the conspiracy videos, it Deep State all, always says the same thing, and that's the president and these congressmen and senators, they're temp employees. You know, these the Deep State has had since 1947, perhaps earlier, to build an infrastructure and and policies, procedures, and 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 get all their their operational security ironed out. They don't have to answer to anybody. And if anyone gets too close, I mean, remember, they control the aerospace industry, the entire military industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about. So it's like, uh, look, you're a senator and you want to expose this. OK, well, how much did Raytheon donate to your campaign? You want that Grumman money? You like uh, Lockheed? You like, right? This All is a, this is world cam. It's just it's a fun UFO channel that just live streams just UFO videos like twenty four seven. What we need in the UAP community is a way to have videos verified, um, so we're not guessing, and we can figure out like sort of how ChatGPT could you could tell if um, a teacher could tell if a student is using it to write a uh, their thesis. If we could right. have a way to put these through and go, hey, these are the real ones and these are the fake ones, it would make it way easier. Certainly uh, because I don't do any research myself, but I think they're all <laughs> good. What do you think? We'll do a, a giveaway bef and then uh, then Gino's story hour coming yes. come straight ahead? Yes. What is our word? Well, somebody said Bill Shat, which I think is funny. You think Bill Shat would work? Uh, I mean, it, I think wet ass is really what they want. Well, yeah. it is, but that's not going to get un that's not going to get past. It'll just block everybody. All right, Frank has a good idea. He he says go with younger wet ass, or is that worse? No ass. I think it's the ass that's the problem. <laughs> a Have younger wet ass sounds worse than just wet ass. Kurt wants to go with Dingleberry. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's safe. Dingleberry. Um, wait. Jay Fleong says the word should be camels love to dance. <laughs> do you like okay. that or you like Dingle? What do you like, Jenny? I, I, I always like Camel Loves to Dance. There we go. All right, so here's how it, work if, it works if you're new here. This is, we're going to give away um, some private quality time with Victoria. And to win, what you do is you type Camels Love to Dance, just like you see it on the screen, no spaces, in the chat. And uh, in a minute, we will we will pick randomly to see who wins. Um, Rob Gable wants to know why bother playing a rigged game? <laughs> who, does he, who does he think rigs it? I, I didn't write this software. This is StreamYard. <laughs> so, but I like where Rob, Rob is a suspicious soul. You know how he is. I don't, I don't, yes. I respect that. I respect it. Trust. Rob's no always one. been like that. Yeah. That's how he is. You know, trust, but verify. Trust, but verify. Uh, but maybe a couple of super chats while we're here. There's Witchy Trista. You have no idea how much I obsess about Lemuria. Thank you so much. This may sound weird to some, but I do energy healing. And my spirit guide who helps me is definitely a Lemurian. Aww. That's fascinating. I mean, um, Edgar Casey has, he mentions Lemuria once in his readings, but he has a lot of stuff on Atlantis. You know, if you're into Atlantis lore, um, you can read Edgar Casey's readings online for free. I think I might have linked them in the episode. There's Vanessa Cole. That's what I'm talking about. Got our two hecklefish plushies today. Worth the wait. I'm glad. I'm glad you got them. Katie, thoughts on the emerald tablets? Um, I did an episode, uh, and I covered all. I covered the emerald tablets and the emerald tablet, and I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, but I, I, I did have thoughts in that episode. Bilgen is, uh, no, West Montgomery, camels love wet ass. Will not win, 
but I like the way he spelled wet ass with a dollar sign dollar sign. So I, I mean, it looks like like a hip hop uh, artist name. <laughs> Small town girl says, "Play slow the chat. I can't see it." I think she means, "Can you slow the chat down?" That's Jenny's it fault. Is. It is. Rhonda Sanchez, camels love to hump. That will not work. Mike says, camel toe dance. That's uh, everyone's favorite dance. Camel toe for, I knew the camel toe comments were coming. Dance, camel dance. Uh, lunatic, lunatic camels dance with pants. John Babcock, I can't read that one. Platypus, no. that's, that's Hecklefish's a safe word, of course. Uh, Baxter, I don't understand Mount Shasta. Why is it still mythical? Why don't people just go there and record what's inside the cave and to end the myths forever? It's too, that's just, it's too logical. He's thinking too logically. Uh, when you go there, I mean, it's the experiences people have that it almost sounds spiritual. I did a whole episode of Mount Shasta and I debunked a good chunk of it. I don't want to spoil too much of it here, but I debunked a good chunk of it. A lot of the lore that we know from Mount Shasta comes from Madame Blavatsky and the Theosophists. And if you follow the channel, you know that I don't buy into any of that. But Blavatsky still has a lot of... So unprofessional. This isn't a live stream. This is a circus. Contaminated is back. Hey, crew, howdy. Great show tonight. Very interesting. This is all new to me, so I'm learning a lot. Getting over COVID right now. I'm sorry to hear that. I had it once. It was not fun. But don't worry. The lockdowns are coming back. We'll be fine. Paul is there. Slow mode limits the rate of messages per person. When there are 7,000 people, even one message per minute will give you a crazy chat. There you go. Humpty dance yeah. will not win. Camels love hairy beavers is wrong. I wish you could do slow mode where you could only make like one message come in every like five or six seconds. But it does. Well, but you can you wish in one hand and you know how that goes. Uh, Gino loves camel toes is wrong. Um, moose knuckles love to twerk. Uh, Vampire says, camel is your chance to do the hump. That's pretty good. Jen is now singing the song in her head. Uh -huh. Mammal toe dance. Danielle's back. First time back after several weeks. Glad you're back. Dang vacations. Yeah, those sound terrible. I've missed you guys. Blows kisses to hecklefish. Now this is an idea I can get behind. Camels love to hump. We're on about this. Love the show you guys make by Thursday nights. Join Patreon. Woo! Looking forward to engaging more with Wi Files. We're looking forward to having you, Morana. Make sure that you check us out on Discord tomorrow morning um, at what time do we do that? Nine? Nine. I, it's just, it's worth showing up at nine just to see Gino because he, he doesn't enjoy. <laughs> he doesn't enjoy those. I mean, 9 a.m. is like that's crack of the dawn. Is the sun even up then, Gino? <laughs> you wouldn't. I, I wouldn't know because I'm never up that early. <laughs> There's Galia, Galia, Galia. Hi, AJ, Gino, Jen, Victoria. Like the app. Thanks. Hugs. She's been a long time Hello. supporter of the channel. It's Galia. Long time supporter of the channel. Uh, Fried Charante for five Australian. The sponsor pieces are great. Need my weekly Gertie. Yeah, Gertie's, Gertie's become a favorite of mine, too. Uh, Deidre Green, $5. Was your dad an NYPD cop the years? Yes, he was. Um, late 60s, early 80s. Uh, Times Square, Midtown South. The glory days of Times Square. I don't know. It's it's not worse now yet, but it's it's on its way. Molly Benton for 10. Love the episode. Any thoughts on the reshot structure as the site of Atlanta? Um, hot Atlanta. I... You know, it looks the research structure is interesting to me. It looks like it fits everything. It's just um, a couple of people that I trust online have said that it's probably not it. 
but I don't know enough about it. I actually have maybe I have to go watch some of Corsetti's videos on it. But uh, Randall Carlson says no. And he's someone that I trust. Uh, Gino Fish Doll will not win, but that's a good idea. Camel's Thirsty. Hecklefish Lord of Dance. I can't read some of these. No. I mean, I can't read Camel's Eat Wet Ass. That's te that's terrible. <laughs> um, Augusto says, I'm surprised you didn't mention the Hindu Vedic texts that talk about the flying Vimanas and massive bombs. Um, the massive bombs episode is coming. The Vimanas are mentioned quite a bit in the uh, ARV episode. We go into those. So if you don't know, the Vimanas, are, they look like flying machines. And they were in the... Um, in the ancient Hindu texts, I think specifically in the Mahabharata, there's there are whole passages about these Vimanas coming down from the sky with gods on them. They describe them with lights, with fire. Maxley has camel toes in uh, in his pants. Daisy dead petals don't even mutter the words another lockdown. Um, they can try but I think we're all over it. Gary Miller for 10. Maybe all the lemurs followed each other off the cliffs of Lemuria before it sank. So the lemur, the lemurs are all over the place. The official science is they swam. That's the official word. The what? lemurs cross oceans. They swam? Just swam. Just they lemur paddled. It did the lemur backstroke. Lemur backstroke. Just floated. What? So that's the official word. No. Lemurs love to swim, will not win. <laughs> Camels love wet ass, will not win. Heckles dirty fishing gertie. I, that, I don't know what that means. I don't either. Camel lube is, is funny, but that will not win. They floated on a coconut, says Doc Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> what they did is they gripped it by the husk. Right. <laughs> right. You, everyone yeah. knows lemurs are migratory. Uh, Steve, for $5, what is your muse that keeps all of you going week after week at such a high level? <laughs> I mean, that's my muse right there. Yeah. Aww. That's very sweet of you. She Aww. needs to be able to afford new Louboutins every three or four weeks. So Shut we got to got we got to keep it keep it going. Shut up. There's Wade for five. Love the show. Almost caught up with every video so far. Where'd you get your glasses? Amazon. People ask me like, oh, how you know? Are they designer uh, expensive? I think they were twelve dollars from Amazon. <laughs> they're 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 amber light readers. Um, Al Alex says, we are the lemurs who say, Me. <laughs> AJ, the romantic. Yeah, that's me. He is. Well, I have my love language. Yes, you do. There's <laughs> April, May, April, May, June. Do you believe in a quick pole shift? <laughs> sounds dirty. How d sounds dirty, doesn't it? <laughs> April. <laughs> Is she she's is she looking for a quick pole shift? <laughs> um, April, I don't think it's likely. I don't a quick pole shift. That I mean, if you mean the physical poles, I don't think it's likely. And there's evidence that Antarctica has been mostly covered in ice for one and a half million years at least. If you mean a magnetic pole shift, I, I, I think that is likely. I think we're in the middle of it now. It's it's one of the few things on the channel I talk about that I, I that actually concerns me. Like I literally have a, a, a generator at the house, like a big one to power the house and other things that you might need in an emergency. And everyone should have that stuff, by the way, even a small generator. For so many and reasons. And get a dual fuel. Go ahead. For so many reasons. Like even not just a pole shift, you know, the, our whole energy grid is aging yep. and dilapidated. And depending on where you live, like 
whole sections of the country are run by like one rando grid, you know, that's old. So what we need to do, we need to, we need to pass like a $1.5 trillion infrastructure bill and that would at least fix it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Pegasus angels there for 20 bucks. The end song was amazing tonight. Dancing with my friends, Egglefish and AJ through the night, through the night. Oh, and Gertie is a camel was awesome to hear. It's catchy. It's definitely catchy. All right, we're at 1300 in the, in the rigged, in the rigged, let's go on in, in the, rigged, the rigged contest. I, you know I how Rob is. He's he he he's a he's a YouTube um, contest denier. That's what that that's what those are called. <laughs> All right, uh, last call for camels love to dance. Ca Fred Redbean says camel humps make my pole shift. <laughs> Camels loves to dance. That's good. That's good. Uh, Thorn, I can't even read that, but that's that's funny. All right, there it goes. There's uh, Josh, Jeremy, Golden, Nick, Robert, Scott, the, uh, David Harris, Jose, McIvers, Chuck Farmer, Anthony Zaro. Anthony Zaro is the winner. I would have laughed really hard if Rob, Rob had won the denier. That would have been really funny. Oh my God, that would have been the best. Blaine5700 insists that this is rigged. Stephen Cole, rigged, rigged. It's all rigged. Rigged. And everyone knows Anthony Zaro is a, a big time Patreon supporter. Everyone knows that. Um, so what does Anthony have to do to get that 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 sweet, sweet time with Victoria? That's Is that what he wins? He wins a happy fish plushie. And he yes. comes to Discord and he puts in a ticket and gives me his name and address and email. And, and phone I'll number? Or do you need his phone number or no? That would be nice. <laughs> well, I mean, well, well, sure. Look, look, Anthony's a handsome fellow. You're one. Is, uh, I mean, Victoria's married, but she's not happily married. So she can. Shut up. Yes, she is. She I is? Say that. Her husband's I didn't... like. Yes, she's happily married. He You're doesn't married. watch. He doesn't watch any 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 he's of this, right? Right there. He's actually asleep on the couch. <laughs> I wouldn't let him play Xbox since y'all heard him last week. <laughs> Poor Mr. Victoria. <laughs> There's the dags. A modern day goldfish lives in style, but you haven't tipped in quite a while. My money is all spent. You haven't tipped a cent. I gotta pay my rent, or I'll be living in a tent in Portland. Ted Dag says, great job, Mischief. AJ did all right, too. She did a nice job tonight, didn't she? I didn't expect to see her up there. I didn't I didn't know that she was was modding. I thought she was going to up there answering questions, but then she was very authoritative. Yes. I might even yes. say pushy. I might even say a little pushy. But she did do a nice job she's the one that came and visited the studio yes which which anybody can do at any time right it was open house no 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 okay uh pegasus angel i got you already thank you for supporting there's electric sheeple for ten dollars booyah that's the stuff in month plus since i discovered Wi files i binged all but one video shadow people you could skip that one. That's a scary one. I had no idea they were related to some of my sleep paralysis experiences. Oh, goodness. Right in the middle of that. You think this passes for a live stream? Think again. Now too scared to watch. Don't want to relive those. I don't blame you, Electric Sheeple. In that episode, I actually tell my shadow person story. And to this day is the scariest um, thing that ever happened to me. 
Paul's back for five. Today's ad let me get caught up. Last week's was funny. Don't apologize for paying your bills. It's not like you're selling hecklefish bath water. No. Mm. No. Hmm. Shonen Fan 4, longtime supporter of the channel, got my hecklefish plushie yesterday. The dust bag and on off switch on the voice box are nice touches. You weren't kidding about the teeth. I think my plushie might need braces. Love the endurance. <laughs> Braces. That's funny. That's funny. Spiral mine. 50 bucks. That's me in the fishbowl. That's me on the YouTube. Begging you for money. I need to buy a little more booze. Wait, no. And I don't know if I can do it. Oh no, I need 10 bucks. <laughs> I haven't got enough. Tell me something, I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Tell me something, I don't know. Where's Gino? Oh shit, where he go? Well, I forgot to read the super chat, though. Spiral Mind, we watch on Patreon and Google. Enjoy both versions. We like your ads. Yahtzee, say no more. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, yeah, that's another Patreon perk. There's a little as three, uh, three bucks a month, by the way. is There are no ads and no AdSense from YouTube, and none of our uh, Gertie ads are in there. But there is a playlist of all our ads on the channel. <laughs> there is. If you just want to sit and watch the commercials, I think they're entertaining. I think they're better than the episodes, but. Um, Gino, are you, are you driving your own media uh, again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's how I messed up earlier. I thought I had it all planned out and I had it ready to go. I uploaded two different things that, that I got two computers going here, got one, one over here, one over here. I thought I had it, had it all ready to go. Uh, I tried to switch around some of my slides right at, right when we started. Didn't turn out well for me. What I, what I like is Gino's not very emotive. Is that fair to say, Jennifer? Yes. So when he was – first he screwed up and he put the, the thing up there, and then he panicked. And, and then instead of pulling it down, it was just changing to different screens. And then it finally – he finally got it figured out with me just blinking at the camera. And then he, I see him down there just doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll learn how to work this uh, thing sooner or later. Oh, I'm still figuring it out. Well, we got a pretty interesting story tonight. Yay! You know, uh, most of the, my stories uh, come from either talking to people on Discord or finding weird stories on the internet. But this one's a Wi Files insider story. I heard this one from none other than Jen herself. <clears throat> uh, which, I'm going to let you drive the slides. Is this the right one to put up for now? No, uh, let me let me go back here. Oh, um, of course, there's a commercial. Of of course there is. <laughs> Well, our story tonight is brought to you by CavemanCoffeeCo.com. You could uh, use the promo code Wild White Files and get yourself some Java 51, the best blend that's out in the universe. Okay, so uh, tonight uh, we're going to be talking about the gnomes of Wallington Park. So uh, uh, there's been gnome sightings all over the world, uh, but and even a lot of gnome sightings in this specific park, but... Um, it, it happened in Nottingham, England. Uh, and we're going to talk about one specific sighting uh, that happened. So uh, I know most of the audience probably hasn't heard of Wallington Park, but they've certainly seen it. Uh, the hall uh, on the grounds was used as Batman's house, Wayne Manor in the um, Dark Knight Rising. Let's see if I could move my slides along here. Uh, so there, there it is. That uh, uh, was Wayne Manor. Um, there, there we go. Uh, got Al Alfred uh, there. Uh, however, uh, the sighting happened on the grounds of the park, uh, which is huge. Uh, there's over 500 acres of gardens and shrubbery. Um, 
there's been multiple sightings in the park, uh, but the most documented one happened on September 23rd, 1979. So let me take you back. Um, it was a crisp fall night um, uh, in 1979. Um, we had six or seven school kids between the ages of eight and 10. They were playing in the park, and since it was getting towards 8 o'clock, the park was going to close. So it was time for these kids to skedaddle back home to their parents before they get pissed off. Uh, I guess, you know, the 70s is a different time. You could have eight-year-olds out there alone in a 500-acre park with no supervision, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, <clears throat> so these kids are out uh, mucking about in the, in the park, um, and they're on their way out of the park. And so this is an overview of the park. So they're on their way out of the park and they're passing this, this area that uh, the arrow is pointing to. Um, uh, so they, are, uh, that's, they call that part of the park, the swamps. They noticed some movement in the trees. And at first they thought there was uh, like a woman rustling around out there, but the closer they look, they see there's a little guy and he was about <laughs> half their size. And these are kids. So, you know, that's pretty, pretty tiny. Um, they were wearing very stylish clothes uh, and a hat. Uh, they had on like some hippie like pants with yellow patches on them, a uh, slim fitting blue shirt, uh, you know, slim fit cut. Um, and they uh, were like typical gnomes, what you would imagine. Uh, they had long white beards with a red tip on their beard. Um, and uh, they were wearing those long gnome type caps like uh they called them naughty caps like what you'd wear to sleep in uh old timey days um so uh so you know it has like it's like a cone shape so they're looking for where this little guy went and they hear a bell ring which is typically associated with gnomes and bells and gnomes so they hear this bell ring ding and one of these little guys pops his face out of the hole in the fence and he made what they described as an odd little jiggling gesture towards him. Um, I'm not gonna speculate on what that means, uh, but it seemed pretty innocent to the kids at the time. So uh, let me move on. So uh, this is an eyewitness drawing of uh, what they saw. Um, we, got a, we got a mic coming for Gino. Uh, sorry, it's a, I got the mic from the ear pods. <laughs> um, so uh uh now now look, look i don't want i don't want you to get uh, nervous but the chat every time you say um they're taking a drink why oh. are you saying that to him <laughs> please uh please i'm trying to help everyone get drunk here so sorry uh that's just the way it goes <laughs> so uh, um so after that first little guy popped out um he quickly disappeared back into uh, into the woods. So they were trying to look where he uh, got off to, but they could see that there was a bunch of these guys up in the trees, looking down at him and laughing at him. So you know they're just up in the trees giggling. So they were speaking a language to each other, but they didn't know what they were speaking. It wasn't English, so they couldn't understand. They just knew that that these little little you know bearded guys uh, are laughing at him. So there's a whole bunch of kids there watching this and half the kids get scared uh, at seeing this and they start uh, running towards the park entrance. But since they were laughing and they seemed pretty jovial, the other half of the kids became more interested and decided we're gonna hop this fence and follow them and see where these little guys went. This is where things get a little bit crazy. Oh, uh, we're not there yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, they, pop, they climb the fence, they go through the trees, they're looking for these guys, and all of a sudden, from out of the trees, comes about 60 of these little guys, a whole bunch. But they're not walking anymore. They got cars. What? They, <laughs> they got little cars. <laughs> they're sitting two guys in each car, and they describe the cars as looking like brightly colored bubbles uh, with triangle lights. Um, and they were, and they were noiseless. They had no visible means of propulsion. Um, and they weren't really touching the ground exactly. They were able to navigate over logs and things like, like that. Um, let me see. Uh, I think we have another eyewitness, um, uh, slide there. 
Um, so this is what, what the car sort of looked look like. Um, I, I guess I got to fix my slides. It's a little cut off. There are some wheels at the bottom there, but they were jumping all over trees and logs and, and things like that. Gnomes are so. known for being very spry and, and sprightly. Everybody knows that. Well, besides the cars, <laughs> besides the cars being noiseless, they had a lever that they used to steer that they were using uh, to steer with, and they kind of like leaned over uh, left and right when they when they won the cars to move. And the cars they were going as I, fast as I witnessed cars. people on shrooms. Oh my god! <laughs> I think I've seen gnomes. I and think I've heard that and seen like are shrooms the gateway to to the gnome world. Uh, well, absolutely, it's very possible. I mean, uh, these could be interdimensional beings. Um, uh, I mean, it's, it's interesting because uh, you'll see as further we get into the story here that they're kind of limited to where they're able to go. So, um, so again, could be interdimensional. Not sure. Um, so. Um, so besides the cars being no noiseless, uh, they had like uh, that lever that I was telling you about, not a steering wheel really. Um, and they said the cars were going as fast as regular cars. One of the kids even said uh, it was going over a hundred miles an hour. Now it's a kid, so you know I don't know how good of a judge he is at, at how fast the car was going. But these things are zipping around the forest, and uh, and they and they start chasing these kids. Now I see from my notes the other night I made a little note in the side of my research that says uh possibly where tesla stole their technology from from the gnomes <laughs> you making this up uh you know i was deep in a rabbit hole in a gnome hole on this so uh who knows um G gino was deep in a gnome hole no. so they were being chased by these gnomes uh and the kids start booking it back to the gates um, so as they get close to the gates, the other kids that ran away earlier, the ones that, that were, you know, too afraid to, to jump the fence, uh, they see, see them being chased by the gnomes. So now they see the gnomes again, uh, chasing these kids out of the park. So they, you know, uh, so they're getting towards the entrance of the park and they realize that the gnomes won't go out of the park where the lights are. So they assume that these guys only come out at night and again, that they're limited to to the area that they that they're able to go to. So um, so these kids get home. They tell their parents, who of course uh, their parents don't believe them. Uh, one of the kids even uh, seen them once before this last the summer before, and his parents didn't uh, believe him then either. Uh, you know, th now we're at a second sighting. Uh, maybe we should start believing these kids. Um, so, however, they went to school the next day, and of course, like the game of uh telephone uh the gnome news spread across all the school kids um once the headmaster got wind of it he decided he was going to get to the bottom of it the headmaster had like a little bit of a columbo in him um let's see here there you go this guy right here so he's going to interview these kids and he, he he's smart enough to record it and document the, the whole thing so um Let's see, slide 10, yeah. So uh, so he takes takes these kids and he separates them and he decides to get each of their stories straight. Uh, he's ready, you know, he's gonna play good cop, bad cop. He's not giving these kids any chocolate milk or snacks. He's gonna get to the truth. Uh, so he interviewed these kids and he couldn't break them. They all pretty much told the same story. They had slight discrepancies, um, like um, one of them thought- Stitches get stitches. <laughs> they, one of them thought uh, that they were all white beards, while another one saw some with black beards. But there's 60 of these guys. So, you know, these kids are trying to focus while they're being chased around by little guys in cars. So, you know, maybe this guy saw this guy and this guy saw, saw this guy. You know, you never know which one is uh, which, you know. So it got a lot of uh, media coverage, um, uh, you know, a lot of press. Uh, multiple articles were written about it. And even a few books came out about it. And luckily, I was able to actually obtain the transcripts. Let's see if I can put this in. Oh, so here we go. Um, so I'm not going to read exactly through the transcripts um, with you guys, but they are available online. Uh, I'm going to go over over just one that I thought uh, was a good one. Um, don't, don't tell me you have an affiliate link and what you get 
10%. Oh. If you if you want to read the transcripts, make sure you buy some Java 51 from cavemancoffeeco.com and use the uh, there it. Is. There it is. Uh, so uh, which of you guys uh, has the best English accent? Can one of you guys read this uh, first paragraph for me? Vic Victoria can. Vic English accent, come on. Go for it, AJ. I can't even um, see. I I can't even see the letters. Um, so when we, I'll do it. I'll do it for you. Wait, you're gonna do the, 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 the accent. British accent? No, I, I need you to do an, do an, the, the accent. Please do. The uh, just do the, just do an English accent for the first sentence. Please, please. I, I, I don't even know how to begin. When we went to Walton Park, we was messing about. We was just looking around the school at first. And when we came back, it was half past eight. And when we were coming back, P.O. fell over and said, look up at those things in the woods. The uh, can we get it? Can we get a, a big holla holla for Gino's English accent there in the chat? Love to see it. Amazing. British Gino, spot on. Spot on. <laughs> I felt like, like I was transported. I was just, I was transported. Oh my God, I'm going to pee my pants. So in these uh, transcripts, you find out a few other details, like the cars were red and white, most of them they thought. Uh, some of the kids thought they were more colorful. They disagreed exactly on whether the pants were just yellow patches or if they, the whole pants was yellow, things like that. But for the most part, they were pretty consistent um, uh, with their, their story. One thing they all agreed on is the kids Jessica Patrick. Giving you a, Jessica giving you a good on you, Gino. Pip, pip. <laughs> <laughs> they all agreed that Patrick fell face first into the mud and was covered head to toe in, in, in mud. So this, this um, was uh, a story that was kind of buried for a long time. Uh, but luckily in 2017, paranormal investigator Simon Young released uh, the transcripts uh, you know, he had he had the transcripts saying uh, that they came from an unimpeachable source. Why should we trust <laughs> him? Well, he has connections with FIS, the Fairy Investigation Society. He wow. the, <laughs> so he created the transcript from the original tapes uh, made uh, by that uh, interviewing uh, Headmaster Columbo there. So let's see here. Um, going back to the stream here. Um, oh, and of course, the most important slide. So that's the story of Wallaton uh, Park Gnomes. Thanks, uh, Jen, for telling me the story, of course. Uh, okay. And if you like this story, please go to cavemancoffeeco.com and use the promo code YFILES and get yourself some job of 51. I love that story. That was a good story. They just, in the little you know, story red, hour. Like, Cars driving around chasing these kids with their I mean, cars. I mean, Cor Corey's like, uh oh, not the FIS. <laughs> you know, but the interesting thing is they have vehicles with no propulsion system that are soundless, just like all the the UAPs we see. And mm -hmm. um, you know, it's gnomes. It's not oh, alien. No. Interdimensional gnomes are part of uh, the UAP phenomenon. I mean, they do say that uh, these crafts are smaller than than usual people size. So, uh, uh, you know, a little bit from this story, a little bit from that story, it starts coming together. You know, these are kids. They thought they were gnomes, but maybe they were seeing something else. All right. Well, this uh, this you know story hour will be on backstage probably tomorrow. If you, uh, I mean, if you want to gather the family around. For like a good old fashioned like British tale. I loved it. So good. Oh, Re <laughs> Renee is just grateful that there was no gnome erotica in this one. <laughs> uh, and by the way, that that erotica story hour got um got demonetized on the backstage channel. <laughs> what? It's too sexy. Too sexy. I mean, the puns, the puns, gnome, gnome on the range. I love it so much. <laughs> Gnome's going to gnome. <laughs> Whew. 
I love it. All right. Again, it, it sounds it sounds far fetched, but there are some interesting tidbits in it that go along with UAP phenomenon and and uh, uh, cryptid phenomenon. You know, Bigfoot, maybe interdimensional being, maybe uh, these are little feet. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> what he, you know, we're it. joking about it, but he's right. There were all sorts of newspaper articles about it, like. This is this is a an actual story. This isn't just like oh we're just you know talking about this. This was a big thing. Har har har. And I'm telling you, uh, we're telling this story, but there was a whole bunch of uh, sightings there. Uh, they um, usually in even different clothes. One time, someone sighted them, and they were near the hall, and they were dressed up as policemen. I mean, there's the FIS and there's the genome policeman. <laughs> the genome policeman. Uh, uh, James James Sweat is asking Gino to do the uh, the, the alien accent next. <laughs> I mean, people are asking for Gino accent hour. The, the thing is, my uh, how am I gonna? All my accents are, stick with the Bronx. I, I don't even know how to get the Bronx out of the accent. <sighs> That's good stuff. Uh oh. Where's Genome? Where he go? That's funny. Okay. Paul, fifty bucks. Woo! I do this stupid show just to make a little bread. You know it's not easy to keep my guppies fed. Bill's up to here and I'm getting really stressed. I'm almost out of vodka, my car get repossessed. I come on the stream and I beg for some dough. You say you can't afford it, your money's kinda low. Come on, man, I ain't going for that. I just ain't going for that. You, you, mean, <laughs> you got, got what, what I need. need. So hit that super chat. Click, Click it, it just, just like, like that. that. Oh, you mean you. You got what I need. I need a super chat. Click that super chat. Lemuria, Kamari Condom, all the things that I first learned from that cartoon Secret Saturdays. I haven't checked that out yet. Obviously with a fictional twist, but still surprised they're real. Anyway, great episode. Nice to hear some of the facts behind the myths. We try to do that. I think it makes the myths more fun when we can attach some facts to it. All right, we're a little over two hours, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a break and I'm gonna plow through some super chats. And thanks to everybody for uh, for supporting the channel tonight. It really helps. If um if you if you'd rather just get some stuff. Check out shop.thewifiles.com. That's the, the shirt of the week right there. That's the Lemuria shirt. Oh, the cicada is still up. What's under home goods? Oh, there's where all the fistable mugs are. This one, that's my favorite, Fear the Crab Cat. So that's shop.thewifiles.com. And also Patreon is a great way to uh, support the channel. Thanks for that, Paul. Paul, big time supporter of the channel. This Hui Kim, please do an MH370 episode. I, YouTube doesn't like that, but I did I did cover it quite a bit. I think it was last week on this show, if you want to check that out. We looked at a bunch of videos from um from all the theories that are that are going around about, about Malaysian flight 370. For our drums is back. Big supporter of the channel. The ancients seemed more bold and larger than life compared to our current time we live in. I sometimes think that these civilizations were not myths, but real. How many more advances were before even the Atlanteans? Cool. I had the same questions for our drums. You know, what's been lost? The other Lebowski's there, 777, another uh, great episode. Also, word of the day, monetization. Yes, yes, I got it. I got it. You don't want to forget to turn monetization on. Oh, uh, I and and people people have um, 
written me saying, just turn it on for the premiere. But I don't, I think I like having the premiere with no ads because it's a reason to, to come and hang out with everybody. And then we're all seeing it at the same time. Uh, it's kind of expensive to do that, but, but I think it's worth it. There's Sarah Burnham, a five. Namadala, Micronesia, huge stone walls in the middle of the Pacific. Yeah, we covered Namadala a little bit in this episode and also in a previous one. I forget which one it was. Was it Mount? Uh, maybe it was Agartha. But Namadal is a crazy place. Let me see if I can, if I can show you what she's talking about. And what's what's really strange about Namadal is nobody knows who did this. Nobody knows who, who built these structures. These are logs that weigh tons made out of uh, volcanic rock that are perfectly stacked. And this is a whole complex. There's a, there's a decent shot of the complex. So um, probably above water at one point. Nobody knows. I mean, it's igneous rock, so you can't really date it. Nobody really knows who built it or when, but they had fresh water irrigation through the whole area. They had a sewer system, and this is thousands of years before ancient Greece. Here's a couple of decent shots of the logs, if you can see those. And I had never heard of Namadal in, until maybe a year ago. It's just not covered all that much. I think... Um, Graham Hancock goes there in his Ancient Apocalypse series. If you want to see uh, see on-site. Ancient Aliens, I think, covered this at one point. Darth Tater thought they were petrified trees. They're not. They kind of look like that. La Onda, similar to Hollywood Hills cave tunnel system. I didn't know there was one there. We lived there for a long time. I didn't know there was a cave tunnel system under the hills. Mayans had the same canal system. That's true. Thanks for supporting Sarah. There's Daniel Martinez for five longtime subscriber here. Appreciate that. Thoughts on people such as Leonardo da Vinci or Jules Verne who are ahead of their time. Also camel plus hecklefish equals cryptid. I guess it could. Leonardo da Vinci is, and Jules Verne, I guess to a large extent because he was so ahead of his time with the science fiction writing. And da Vinci was ahead of his time with, with everything. A, a, a true polymath, Da Vinci. He almost seems like a man out of time, like just, just too smart and too talented. He's I, I can't explain him. He's one of those. He's on the short list of if there's anybody that you can talk to, right? You sit and have a meal with. It would be it would be Leonardo, Jules Verne, probably a good hang also with all of his ideas. Might as well throw H.G. Wells in that list as well. Jules Verne, by the way, still holds up. The language is, it feels, it reads a little dated, but the stories are still super fun. You know, uh, 10,000 Leagues and uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Is Around the World in 80 Days his as well? Or is it H.G. Wells? One of those. Chris Hudson for 20. Excellent episode. The tales of Atlantis and Lemuria have always fascinated me. Thanks, AJ, Jen, Gino, Victoria, and the rest of the Wild Files team. P.S. My closet is becoming overrun with Wild Files shirts. I appreciate that, Chris. <laughs> we were just having that conversation today. It was we were? just like, I have so many. Yeah, I said, I, I, I don't need them every single week. But we'll still get them. We'll keep them wrapped because we can do them, give them for giveaways. And when people just stop by the studio open for open house, we can have some stuff to give away. All right. Jen agrees. She's very agreeable tonight. Benny Hernandez for 10. Keep up the good work. Love listening to your videos when driving home from work. Cool. Benny, and you could catch those on Spotify or other podcast platforms if, you, if that's easier for driving. Um, I, I don't know how the commercials are on Spotify. I know they're there. But when I schedule the ad breaks on Spotify, I, I only put in two in the whole thing with YouTube. I put them all through the episode, but YouTube kind of controls that. 
If I do two for YouTube, it'll say that's not enough. It'll play commercials anyway. But with Spotify, there's only two ad breaks. They're pretty short if you want to do it that way. And speaking of podcasts, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to start adding to uh, the Wi Files Operation podcast long form versions of the stories that we cover here, including topics that I that you hear me shy away from on YouTube. I'll cover those on the podcast and we'll do deep dives because there's a lot of information. And I just can't get into the episodes because they get so long that I'll just keep the research. And if we do an episode like Lemuria tonight, 30 minutes, if you're interested in learning more, I'll do 60, 90 minutes later in the week on the podcast, if that's fun, if anyone listens to that. And Victor Lux, have you heard of the letter to humanity that E.T. wrote all of us? Sounds important enough to cover. I have not heard of that. Letter to humanity. I'm just going to letter to an open letter to humanity. Is, is this the one Invicta on medium? No, that ain't it. Alien open letter to humans from aliens. Is this it? You have to tell me in the chat. Library of Alexandria. I don't know if there's a whole episode there, JD, but there's cer it's certainly worth worthy of discussion. There are a lot of good stories about the library. Um, there's the the theory that it was that it didn't burn accidentally; that it was sacked and destroyed. So we can cover that. I'd love to know what ancient knowledge was lost in the library. What a, what a, was it? What a tragedy! I think I've read that when the, when the library burned. A sizable percentage of all of humanity's knowledge was destroyed that day. Zeb Francis, YFAM, Ross, and Rachel were on a break. I think that's that's I know that's a friend's reference, but I don't know what that means. Do you want to they you want to were explain? on a break? They were on a break. So what does that mean? Did, did she did broke someone up have a... with him and he slept with somebody else? And then she decided she wanted to be broke up, and she was all pissed off at him when she found out about it. And he's like, we're on a break. We're on a break. Yep. Anything that happens on a break, it's inadmissible. Right? Yes. Yes, we have an agreement. I don't want to know, and she don't want to know. Main Arm 1 for $10. Have you seen the movie The Fourth Kind of Habit? It's the only movie I've seen that actually scared me. Supposedly a true story with actual case footage. A uh, thriller involving an ongoing unsolved mystery in Alaska. Well, one town has seen an extraordinary number of unexplained disappearances during the past 40 years, and there are accusations of a federal cover-up. How did I miss this one? Hmm. I mean, we love Will Patton. Anything that Will Patton's in, we're going to watch. You guys are watching Silo? I never heard of it on Apple TV. I got so into it that I bought all three books. If you're into sci-fi and sort of post-apocalyptic type of stories, check out Silo. Thanks for that, Maynard. We'll keep an eye on that movie. Nancy J's there for 20 Canadian Hecklefish Plushie. Headed my way. Woot! That's good to hear. I was so nervous that they were going to be delayed again. So it, Victoria and Jen told me they're shipping. And I said, great, but I didn't believe them. But then when I started getting pictures from, from people getting their plushies, it was whew, nice to see. Uh, JT for $20. I just got my Huel that was purchased through the Wi Files link. But then I got scared. Is Hecklefish going to show up and direct my workouts? <laughs> I think I, it wasn't Hecklefish. A, he was a trainer on Tonal for a while. So. Well, and he directed you during your workouts the last time. Oh, that's right. That's why JT's saying that. Yes. Da -da -da. I mean, I was, I was eating lightning and I was crapping thunder. There's no question about it. 
All right, JT. Good one. Cherry Dunnigan is there for five. How did that man walk five miles into a mountain and not die and find his way back out? He actually went in over 11 miles. So he went in, I think he started seeing gold about three miles in. He found the village 11 miles in. He said it was a complex tunnel system. So not three miles in a straight line. I don't know how wide uh, Mount Shasta is at the base. Probably pretty wide. But what's interesting about the story, and which sounds bonkers, I know, but underneath Mount Shasta are miles and miles of lava tubes that are big enough for you to walk in that go that go all over the area. It's new merch. That's what new merch? Know? Yes. All right. It's a white files beanie. What? I said, hang on, let me see. Apparel. It's a Wi Files beanie. That's it. Looks like a decent beanie, actually. It it's is. It's all embroidered. People were asking about it. Uh, they oh. want one. Twenty dollars. We could sell that's, that for fifteen, can't we? That's really good. It's. Um, it is. It's embroidered and everything. Oh, that's embroidered. That's not like a stick-on patch no. or some cheap no. junk. Let me. Turn it inside. Let me see if they've got the felt back and the stitching. Turn it inside. Let's see. Oh, okay. All right. 20, 20 still sounds a little high, but okay. It's not. Weldon. It's not? Delete Weldon. What about Weldon? I'm putting him in, in timeout. Thank you, whoever did that. <laughs> oh, someone got, someone got put in a timeout. Yeah, he said something rude. I like your hair when, when you take the hat off. It looks like you've got that FF hair going. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. She knows. She knows. Uh, Thomas, Richie's there. High Brazil is not sinking. Isn't High Brazil? High Brazil is the, the continent that's off the uh, off Ireland. I didn't it. Isn't that mythical? Yeah, that's so that's a mythical island, but it's still worthy of coverage. And that video I was telling you about earlier where the geologist shows how the earth was when the the, the sea level was lower. There was a chunk of land over there off the British Isles. He didn't, he didn't call it high Brazil, but that's what I was screaming at the screen. You know, we're weird like that. Thanks for supporting Thomas. There's Envoy for 1999. Please do not shy away from the humor and the ads. They're a great new addition to the show that allows you and Hacklefish to express your comedic chops in a fresh new way. Don't listen to the haters. Keep on being you. Thanks, Envoy. I appreciate that. Uh, it's my own. Uh oh, so the, 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 the chat knows where the FF hair is. Of course I, they do. I mean, shit. Shannon is saying FF hair sells hats. Yeah, well, that's why Weldon got put in timeout because he said something snarky. Weldon did? Appropriate, Weldon. Which is why I tell you not to say things that are inappropriate. Oops, looks like we lost Jen there. There she goes. John Anderson for 10. So that might explain the sightings of laser beams at volcanoes not being shot into, they're coming out of as a defensive action, maybe an arc, uh, an active relic from a war long ago that never got the memo. I like the way you think, John. I like the way you think. Uh, Weldon's just getting dragged in the chat. Occult Works, AJ going to get time out. You wouldn't... No, you, you wouldn't I can't. dare. She can't do that. You think I'm going to give her the power to do that? You're crazy. Gary Miller for 10. Is the breakup of Pangea what was mentioned in 1 Chronicles 119? And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg because in his days the earth was divided. I don't know if that if that's what's referenced there, Gary. It's interesting to think of. You got my juices flowing on that. I'm going to leave a note. You know, I like those religious references about history. 
Who's next? There's Krilly Manili, longtime viewer, first time tippa. Thanks for the new weekly date night ritual for the GF and I. Any chance on an episode about the Baltic Sea anomaly? That's that's coming. Plenty of people have asked for that. Is there any more romantic date night than just spending a little time with me and Hecklefish? No, that's my favorite it's date really night. Really, sweetest human thinks. I mean, sometimes I could do without the fish, but. <laughs> She's cackling. Look, well, Jen, didn't even, Jen didn't even watch an episode until we hit a million subscribers. That is so Oops. Oops. There's Andrew Andrew K for Five Canadian. Who penned the Wi Files lyrics? Love them. Uh, his name is Martin. I have an email out to him about how he wants to be credited. So I'll put his name in the credits next week because that's all him. And the singing guy's got chops. But yeah, I loved what he did with the song. Sir Lancer, 23 for five, just signed up for Patreon. Welcome aboard. This is the only one and only channel I have super chat. Well, I appreciate that, Sir Lancer. But but if you have other creators that you enjoy, they would appreciate any support. It is hard out here. It's hard out here. Bruh. I thought you were going to sing it. Hard out here for a pimp. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what that was coming. There's Ricky for Five New Zealand. Think what's hiding on Zealandia since New Zealand is, is the only part above water. There's so much there. I got to fill link to that video for you guys. Millions of square miles. And he even talks about what the ecology was. Focus what the ecology was. And he specifically goes into Zealandia. Like there, there would have been all kinds of plant and animal life there. Very interesting. Can think, can't think of a name. I like what you did there. The ads are great and funny. The reason they don't excavate is they don't want us knowing the truth. A few powerful people control the many. Until AI takes control of everything, we'll never know. I guess that's an upside to AI taking over. Katie wants to know my ultimate theory of life. That's hard to answer, Katie, uh, without getting too philosophical. But uh, I think we're here for a reason, to learn stuff, acquire knowledge, and bring it back to the big energy that we come from, whatever you want to call it. You want to call it heaven or God or the universe. I think that's what it is. And maybe we're just sentient programs designed to, to, to do that and bring it back to the main program. That could be true. I think simulation theory and religion, those work for me. They just make sense. Religious fans of the show disagree vehemently but i think i think it make i think it makes sense you've you've seen those comments oh yeah oh yeah i mean yeah uh, they they, they yeah. insist that i need some jesus christ in my heart yes look i dig jesus i dig him cool guy cool guy but i i think there could be a simulation theory and jesus i think that works works so no this no disrespect, no disrespect to Jesus. It's Victoria that hates Jesus. So, Katie, that's what I think, but if I'm being honest, it's kind of what I hope. Because if you told me that there's no meaning to it and we're just animals and live for a, just a few years and we're gone and it means nothing, that would make sense to me too. I just don't like to think of it that way. Sonny A, 50 bucks? I'm so tired, I'm a human. We've been together too long. I should have my own show. The moron says I am wrong. <laughs> so while he lay there asleep, I had my laptop in bed. So I logged into Reddit. There was a message that read Do you want to be on YouTube? Do you like to entertain? Come and be my co-host. You only need half a brain. <laughs> if you like aliens and pyramids, conspiracies catch you high, then you're the co-host I'm looking for. 
Message me and apply. Have you ever thought about doing an episode on the bicameral mind third man syndrome? A lot of famous explorers have experienced it. I experienced it during a whitewater disaster. Tom Sawyer, me, oh, Tom Sawyer, you please. I wish I would have read that earlier. You got the escape song. Sonny, I'm sorry about that. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get some Tom Sawyer for next time. I think third man syndrome might be on the list or it's something that we did talk about. So, uh, so maybe that's coming up. So I have thought about doing an episode on that. Right. That's, is that on our list somewhere? It's on a list that I made because I am fascinated by this subject. I, it's amazing to me. And you wouldn't consider yourself very religious. No. But it's this theory that, especially in times of trouble or danger or disaster, there is a presence that you feel that sometimes saves you. Yes. And it's, have you, I mean, it's have you experienced this? No, I haven't. Knock on wood. I mean, I've been really lucky in that I haven't had like crazy, crazy, like near death. Well, the, well, the day's doorway is interested in doing this. Uh oh, David Bendel's out. The Jesus talk was too much. <laughs> I just, I talked about Jesus for. Seven seconds. Uh, that's too much for David. You know how he is. He's got he's got a short fuse when it comes to the, to the big J. So, but yes, I think it's it's a fascinating topic. And I was reading, I was doing some research on it, and I I just I love it. Okay. Maybe we'll we'll get into that one. All right, Jen likes it. Tanneru for ten. Hey, great episode this week. 13 years ago, I learned about Zechariah Sitchin and the Anunnaki. My girlfriend at the time thought I was nuts and openly mocked me for thinking it was a great story. Well, that's why you dumped that young lady, Tanneru. I don't like her at all. Not one bit. What do you think of that? Sarah Berman for 10. While you're on Google Maps, go to Namadal in Micronesia. That's the simulation at work. The local myth says that 24-inch twin brothers telepathically built the huge stone walls there and then began a line of rulers. I'd like to learn more about that local myth and who those people were, Sarah. But thank you for that. That's really interesting. That Namadal is fascinating. Uh-oh. Here I I I hope I gotta say, I hope your name is Jesus because if I say Jesus, David's gonna get upset. And I don't want to get him upset. He gets a little have you heard about the Baltic Sea Anomaly? I have. Uh, if you do, what do you think about it? I love every episode. Thank you for making Thursday a bright spot in my week. I think we're going to cover that uh, shortly because it's come up three or four times tonight. So we'll get that. What's going on in the chat? Which bit of them was 24 inches? All right. Mar Marvin Reese says, don't worship the messenger. Wor worship the message. That's That's good advice. I mean, they're they're not going to. Some of them are not going to like that in chat. But Wild Rose says, "Let's all pray for David." So, David, it's okay if you don't love Jesus. Jesus loves you. Travis McCormick is there. Can you say hi to my wife, Catherine McCormick, and tell her the aliens believe in her as much as she does them? <laughs> hi, Catherine. Is that you waving to Catherine? And can you tell aliens. her that the, that the aliens are good? Or they believe in you. The aliens believe in Catherine McCormick. Yes. Well, that's good. I hope we made her feel better. She's been insecure about that. Well, yeah. Bear Shannon for ten. Hello from our tent in Portland. <laughs> we got our Segata 3301 shirts today, just in time for another new Wi-Fi. So excited for our very own Heckle to arrive soon. I hope it arrives. I hope you're enjoying your tent in Portland. What does that cost? About 2400 a month? Pause back for five. The earth is not round. It's an oblate spheroid. He's very specific, that fella. Can't get one past him. There's Keith Nolan for uh, 2211 for 10. I really enjoyed the Atlantis and Lemuria video, but I was wondering if you were familiar with the Book of Truth, the voice of Osiris. It has a lot of stories about them. I don't 
I'm not familiar with those, but I'm going to write that down. That's my cup of tea. Voice of Osiris. There it is. The book, the book of truth or the voice. That's one book. The book of truth or the voice of the hardcover is three hundred dollars on Amazon. I guess it's out of print. I don't see a summary. Hardcover, three hundred dollars. I could probably find a PDF of it. I'll grab. It. Thanks, thanks, right, Keith. Doctor Gonzo for five. Did you mention that time Tammy Wynette went to the land of Mew? I never heard that, Doctor Gonzo. And if that's a Tammy Wynette joke, I don't get it. But for some reason, it, that comment tickles me. Chris R9 recently started listening to old Art Bell shows. That's a great experience. I think he would have enjoyed the Wild Files. I think he would have too, Chris. I think he would have liked the show. I don't know if, if, if Nori would care so much about it, but, but I think Art would have enjoyed it. Dr. Nan Fran, 100 bucks. Yo, 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 moo la la. Yo, yo, fish really need some money. I need to buy some stuff. Fish really need some money. YouTube don't pay enough. Fish really need some money. So click the super chat. Like that, that, that. That. We already know aliens are real. After all, the Wi Files team is out of this world. I'll see myself out. But I'm dumb. Jen, that's, that's, Jen loves that kind of humor. I do. Well, that's a problem. Starcraft Oakley. I made a comment on the subreddit post linking the episode with a small interview I did with the Cuba Structure researcher himself. Check it out. I will have to a comment on the subreddit post linking the episode. Starcraft, do you mean in the Wi Files sub? If so, then I will look for that. If you mean something else, and let me know. You can, if you can't put a link in the chat, you can just email me. Michael Lennon, camels love to dance. I'm sorry. That was an hour ago. Starship and Haiku, what about spontane spontane spontaneous human combustion? So you hear me complain about, about uh, demonetization and the algorithm. There, I have a whole video on spontaneous human combustion. It's, it's there. No one has seen it because YouTube crushed it. So Starship, it's it's there. And it's decent. Decent episode. Gabrielle Ariola is here. Loves the channel. Um, I love his last name. So people it's in the Ari chat, really, they really want you to know, apparently there's a British duo called KLF, and they did a song about Tammy Wynette and going to the land of, of Mew. Because <laughs> I looked it up. Because everybody was saying KLF in the in the chat. Well, son of a gun. <laughs> it was featured on their 1991 album. Was it Justified and Ancient? Yes. Well, Justified and Ancient is a song by British British band the KLF. It was featured on the 19. All right, we already got the song is best known for its remake that was released on 25 November 1991. Stand by the jams. Uh, what what is the bag? What is it about? Don't care about any of that or its riffs. I don't see anything about Moo in here. I saw the lyrics and it said something about oh the the refrain is all bound for Moo Moo Land. Yes. I'd like to play it, but I can't. They won't let me do that. No. You get demonetized. This is a very Scandinavian name right there. Gunnar Jorgensen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got my yeah. lizard people hoodie today. Can't wait till it's cold enough to represent my people. I love that one. I have that one. I love that sweatshirt. Lizard people hoodie. Which one is that? It's the um, I don't know which one he got. I have the, the the Vitruvian lizard. Oh, that's why Victoria's doing this down there. Yes, that's why she's doing that down there. 
There's Duncan for 50 bucks. Just no, just, chiggity, chiggity, chiggity. just supporting. Just here you go. And Mr. Wilson is there. Just got his first ever Patreon membership. Chose the manta ray. What level is the manta ray? 50. 50? Whoa. You've You're quickly become my favorite YouTube channel. Look forward to Thursdays for new videos and after files. Keep up the great work. Hecklefish for, for president. Hey, pretty smart for a human. I appreciate the support. Manta ray level. Very nice. I don't know what the levels are. What's the lowest? What's the three bucks? Um, oh, God, don't test me. <laughs> I just, well, when they were belts, I knew what those were. I know. Uh, is it, something is it a, what, a cod? Guppy, maybe. I don't know which one it is. I'll have to Not going to be a. No, I can't think of it right now. Salmon. I'll, I'll look. I'll look it up. But and Patreon is a great way to support the channel, by the way. Yes, it is. It's taking forever to load. Well, of course, it's because we're waiting. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Wilson, for the support while we're waiting. Low, never the. The 16th century woodcut from Germany profile an aerial battle, a phenomenon in the sky, is the smoking gun. No fake news back then, but was that Lemuria coming back to give it to Atlantis? That's part of the legend is um, Atlantis won the first war and then Lemuria came back and then destroyed Atlantis. So it could be. I don't know what, what woodcut you're talking about, but that's interesting. Flounder. Flounder. Hey. Yes. Flounder is $3 a month. And then koi for 7 Tuna for 15 Piranha is 20 Barracuda is 35, Manta Ray is 50, and then it goes up from then it goes up from there. Wow. All right, well, there they go. Thanks for doing that research. There's DT1876 for 20. AJ, I know you usually avoid cryptid type stuff. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't like the cryptids. Curious for your thoughts on some historical Bigfoot sightings, such as Ruby Creek. Or the old story relayed by Ted Roosevelt about a man named Bauman. I haven't heard that story. I, I'm not a big fan of the of the cryptid, specifically the Bigfoot. So I don't know the Ruby Creek one off the top of my head. Ruby Creek. I bet Google knows. Ruby Creek incident. site of one of the most well-known Sasquatch sightings. The creature paid a visit to the Chapman family in broad daylight fur. The hair seemed to be about four inches long all over and a pale yellow-brown color. The body of the creature was entirely human in shape, except it had been broken apart and its contents partially eaten. Which measured at approximately 16 Whoa. inches. This drawing shows an outline of the cast, along with a regular men's foot size 11 for comparison. All right, you know, maybe that's a Gino story hour. You know, I stay away from cryptids, but I'll do them. I will, I'll mix in cryptids if you, if you want them. I mean, Azura Roycroft uh, 100% believes in Bigfoot. Brian Brooks is the giveaway over. Yeah, we usually do the giveaway at, at on the other side of the first hour. Igzy, that's definitely a Gino story hour. Those are both good ones. The armchair rocker says, well, Bigfoot is not a fan of you either. What do you think of that? That's a fair point. Jesus or Jesus is back for 10. But have you seen the videos of babies being born underwater, such as birthing pools or tubs? They start to, to wad, waddle water as soon as they come out. I've seen those. They swim. Babies swim. I still think they're, they're fat and ugly. <laughs> they're, they're adorable. But yes, they do. They'll They're swim. so fat. They sh aren't they ashamed of themselves for being so pudgy? It's so cute. <laughs> A three-day fast is four days too long without food, says Paul. 
Yeah, I had 11,000 people in the chat telling me that I'm losing fat and all this. I'm like, I'm doing it right. <laughs> you're not doing it right. <laughs> doing it and right. I will tell you everything you're doing wrong, I promise. Do you know what's the longest you've ever gone on a fast or a diet? <clears throat> Uh, I don't know, uh, like six hours, six hours. There he goes. I knew that was coming. Saw it coming all the way down the road. Legion of comics for five. Join the Patreon. Thanks for supporting. Appreciate that. Watch the episode early for the first time. Couldn't wait. Fantastic episode. Hang loose. We are Legion. Legion of comics. I appreciate you supporting the channel Patreon. And yeah, the videos have no commercials there, but there's the playlist of the Gertie commercials. If you want to see them on the channel, I think they're fun. We two G. Have you ever heard about the aquatic ape theory and or the stoned ape theory? Also, can I borrow $5, please? Thank you. I've heard of those, but I don't know much about them. Ah, uh, this is why I've heard of it. Terrence McKenna. Stoned ape theory is a controversial theory first proposed by American ethnobotanist. He was an ethnobotanist, Terrence McKenna. Or he's a psychonaut in his 1990. Two book, Food of the Gods. Theory claimed that the transition. Yeah. Not only am I familiar with this theory, I brought this up uh, when Gino and I were on Rogan a few years back. We talked about this. This is something that that I kind of I kind of believe. And when I say believe, I don't necessarily mean I believe that this would happen. This is a theory that makes sense to me. That that early humans were, were just apes. They ate mushrooms and it awakened their sentience. That makes sense to me. Does that make sense to you, Jennifer? I mean, we still don't know what, the, I mean, we don't have the missing link. Like what still, turned. Still no out. missing link. Right. So yeah, the theory is that, you know, what? ancient apes got stoned or ate mushrooms or whatever. And it, tweaked the pineal gland or, you know, it turned it on. You made a face because. Oh, something happened there. I'm not sure. I think it's our internet. Tony Sedani for 10. Here's some shekels for dinner, even though your doomsday polar shift videos keep me up all night. I'm sorry about that, Tony. They keep me up too. It's, you know, it's one of those things. How do you even prepare for it? Got the generator. We've got stuff, but even. I still live in the suburbs, so I've got enough food for two, three weeks, but then then it's all about who, you know, who's got more ammo. Justin Watkins for 10. The airplane lady is my soulmate, and I will literally fight only everyone for her. <laughs> Justin, I, you know, I can't let you do it. It's bros before hoes. You know the rules. Yeah, I can't, I can't let you go down that road. <laughs> Well, that is the rule, isn't it? It's the rule. What was the name of our first production company? Broho Productions. That's right. Because it was two bros and a hoe. It's me and you and Gino. No offense to you hoes out there. No offense to you hoes. <laughs> yeah, Justin, stay away from her. But, uh, you know, crazy, angry women... Some, some people are into that. <laughs> There's Nikai for five. What are your thoughts on the uh, Valentini equation? It could lead to a fun deep dive. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. So let's, let's see the rabbit hole. Valentini equation. There it is. Equation was secretly commissioned through the UN Security Council. Oh wait, that's that's the uh, that's the conspiracy. All right, maybe that's what we want to read. The equation was secretly commissioned through the UN Security Council and is used to predict the time of human extinction. According to the 1975 orientation film, the Sri Lanka video, the Valenceti equation predicts the exact number of years and months until humanity extinguishes itself. Uh, everybody write that down. Everybody write that down right now, Valenceti equation, and we get that into the production schedule. That's a banger. Look, every, every video I do that's about the, the world ending, they, they click it. Right. 
So if we have a, an equation that can tell us the exact when it when so when is the how much time do we have? Three weeks. Oh no. No, I'm just kidding. That's not what it says. Nikai, how much time do we have? Let me see. Is she in the chat? Stephen, Stephen Mario has got eyeballs on Nikai. Tammy Trachi, 2027. <gasps> That's the alien year. Uh, they're coming. Uh, they Danny, Stormborn, uh, Danny Stormborn, according to the channel you mentioned in the poll shift, Nevada is not surviving. That's true. <laughs> but, uh, you know, do you want... Do you want to survive the, the apocalypse or no? no? I'm not down for it. Jen, do you want to survive the apocalypse? Yeah. <laughs> I knew she'd say yeah. She really doesn't. She just watched a little too much TV. I do. The fat alien, the aliens be the end 2027. Yeah, that's what Ramirez says from CIA. Apophis Asteroid, 2029. Kila B heard something about 2030. Well, this is all coming coming right at us. I was hoping it'd be like after 2035. Let Jake deal with it. I'll be, <laughs> yeah. I'll be sitting in a jar in his mantle. Oh. <laughs> 2045. I can go, I can go with that. Bundy McCain, August 16th, 2036. That's specific. <laughs> At 4.15 in the afternoon. Oddly specific. Was Theo Vaughn on your guys' episode? Of Jerry? No. Oh. no, no. It was Gino and I in Red Band. Okay. Paul, 50 bucks. I want you to know I said human Thank you for all the dough Tipping As I'm sure you will find Always is a good time Ooh, ooh, ooh It's fun to tip the F-I-S-H It's fun to tip the F-I-S-H <laughs> You guys are getting pretty pretty good it's it's coming together it is another seven months and we'll have it down people want disclosure with aliens but you will thank the government for letting you sleep at night when the truth is revealed we are insignificant pawns beneath cattle brought to the slaughter and this will be a reality soon sleep tight you know i don't like it when he drinks it during the after files <laughs> he gets dark doesn't he it's real dark like the, the, the messages from Paul early in the show are great episode, a lot of fun. And then we get toward the middle end and it's just end times. And you'll wish, you'll wish you were never born. Uh, yeah, no, I don't, uh, but he, it's 50 bucks. You got to read it. Well, yeah, but no local no. boy. It's a cookbook referencing the great twilight zone episode. Again, alien sightings have been happening for hundreds, if not thousands of years, if you believe cave paintings. Why would they not have been around? Like, you know, there was horrible things happening in the world before now that you would think that if they were here, they'd be like, um, hey, guys, stop doing that. Now, they're just going to pop up and go, okay, now we're going to slaughter all of you guys. I don't get it. They've been around forever. <laughs> There's Joe for 10. Can you please do an episode exploring the occult founder of JPL, Jack Parsons, and his ties to NASA and Alistair Crowley? Um, have you read The Secret History of Twin Peaks? I haven't read The Secret History. I know Jack Parsons' story very well. I can't really cover it because it's... There's explosions, and you can't cover anything with, with, with Crowley in it because he's, in the. You can't tell his story without getting into sex magic, 
And I know everybody in the chat wants to hear that, judging by the reaction to Gino's alien erotica story. I know you guys are into sex magic, but I can't get that through the algorithm. But Jack Parsons is an interesting story. I don't know how to tell it without his black magic stuff. So he was a, a brilliant inventor. And essentially, he, he blew himself up. Yeah, I don't know how to cover it, Joe, but um, let me leave a note. Because now that I'm thinking about it, what I have to remind myself is the podcast is coming. And um, let me get that on, on the list. The podcast is coming, and I could definitely cover all this stuff there. Great suggestion. Solid. Uh, Vincent is here. Update episode boob quakes too. <laughs> oh, YouTube hated the boob quake episode. I don't know if anyone's even seen it. Victoria, you've seen the boob quake episode. All right, there she goes. And you've seen the boob quake episode. Yes. You could have starred in that episode. Thanks, Vincent. Good suggestion. Melissa just got home and watching with my hecklefish plushie. All right. What do you think of it? Did you smell the teeth yet? They smell weird. What, what, what are you doing? Sucking lemons down there? What's your issue? Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yes is the answer. No, I'm just kidding, of course. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding, too. Now they're going to be talking on Reddit about how we need a divorce and we need, I, I need know. to look inwards and you, they, they have hotlines for you to call. Yes. Just for, just for me. Somebody right? earlier. You've, you've seen okay. those, right? Like here's a hotline for you to call. It's a safe place for you. Right. She's abused. <laughs> <laughs> I force her to wear the Lemuria shirt. You put that shirt on. Put on that beanie. <laughs> Buy that BMW. I force it all on her. <laughs> uh, Steven is new to the channel and has binge watched so many already. Very entertaining. Do you know about the 1561 celestial phenomenon over Nuremberg? That rings a bell. Isn't, I think there's a famous woodcutter. Yes, I've seen that. Not enough for an episode, but yeah, I'm familiar with that. Appreciate the support. There's Jet Black Threat for five. Any chance these UFO sightings could be holograms? I don't think so, Jet Black. I covered this on Project Bluebeam, which I don't think is a real thing, just because the technology's not there. Now, but I'm speaking that from the perspective of us and American technology. Could aliens have holograms? They probably could, but they show up on radar, and I don't know if a hologram would show up on radar. Uh, a hologram that we made wouldn't show up on radar. Could they create a hologram that shows up on radar? And if they could, why would you? Appreciate the support. Senzubin is there for 10 euros rep. Mike Turner sponsored big time by Lockheed. Yeah. And other private aerospace companies. And he just blocked any future UFO hearing from happening. Maybe we should do a conspiracy video about gatekeepers. I mention them all the time, Senzubin. I try to get right up to the line where... I'm not going to get in too much trouble. Not from YouTube. It's the knock on the door. But uh, yeah, the aerospace companies, poor, uh, who's the thing that uh, that Burchett was talking about today. And I think a lot of the few politicians that are moving it forward. So talking about on the Senate side, you get Gillibrand and Rubio in the House, Burchett and um, Nancy Mace is another good one. Their big point is we want to know about the aliens. Yes, of course. But the big issue is transparency is shouldn't, shouldn't we just know? And if there is a threat to national security, shouldn't at least Congress know what that is? Instead, they're just the defense industry is just deciding for us what we can handle. Couch Couch and says Lockheed Martin. Yeah. Lockheed, Raytheon, Grumman. You know, it's the same 
companies that come up every other week here. Uh, Arrow has to, by law, do an update every year before October. Uh, yes, that's true. But a lot of a lot of people on the UFO side are not big fans of Arrow. I'm, you know, I'm not. But I don't. I'm not a UFO guy. But if you if you hear um, Corbell talk, he doesn't believe anything comes out of Arrow. We need to know. Nathan Manning, Skunk Words, Skunk Works. Yep, that's Lockheed's Special Projects Division. Peter F. In 500 years, they'll be doing conspiracy videos on the feared crab cat and its unknown origin. The unknown at Gino. I have a couple of videos for you, Gino. I made caveman coffee. Where do I send them? You go, jump on Discord. Let me leave you a, a link there. Unknown. So, I mean, when you see Gino Friday mornings, if he looks rough, that just means he was on Discord way too late the night before. So you can usually catch him on there in the voice chat. Is that true? Yeah, I will be on Discord tonight, right after the show. I mean, so jump in the voice chat. If someone wants to tell me a story, it could wind up being the story hour for next week because I begin looking for story hour as soon as the show's over. I typically am looking on Thursday and Friday night to find it. So tell me a story. Might might make it on. Um, you never know. Oh, there's the tease. You never know. J.D. Jones for five. The patent for Northrop Grumman's TR3B is listed online. Here's the patent number. That's good to have. That's the uh, triangular craft that, that J.D. Jones is talking about that's been linked to a lot of sightings, which I think is probably true for a lot of them, especially out here in the desert, which I, I believe that's I believe that launched out of Nellis. J.D. would know for sure, but I think that was a Nellis project, an Area 51. Juan Castle for five. Well, when the aliens arrive, I'll be smoking a good one with Gino and Victoria. I don't think Victoria, Victoria, you get high. I have never smoked anything in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, up until a couple of weeks ago, Victoria, you never chewed nicotine in your life. It's true. I didn't say I don't get high. I said I've never smoked. <laughs> Hmm. Good answer. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, Gina will take care of you in the studio with with smoke. I mean, the, but I know Mr. Victoria is sitting right there. Don't, don't tell him. Don't tell him I said that. Atlantis is something I've read extensively about and totally believe it was real. Just an ancient culture. Thanks so much for covering this awesome episode. Yeah, I believe it too, Robert. You know, I don't, I don't know if I believe that they were advanced with flying machines and all that. I, probably not. But advanced for that time, certainly. I believe it. BM. It's always nice to have a good BM. The younger wet ass would net you the lucrative Biden-Epstein demographic. Just kidding. Your channel is great. Any consideration towards spicing the format up and doing live stream interviews with experts and or witnesses? Yes, those are coming. That's going to be on the podcast, BM. We'll do those on the podcast. And if they're any good and people like them, we'll we'll put the video somewhere on YouTube. The video was, will be on Spotify. If people like them, we'll put the video up um, probably on the backstage channel or I'll launch a new channel just for that stuff. We won't put it here. But those are coming. Siguru, Siguru7, love your channel. Well, you'll be talking about RH negative blood type on the Anunnaki episode. Thanks for all you do. I wasn't going to, but that is a good that is a good, that's good to put in there. We have uh, Anunnaki being researched. Yes. How do we get a note to them to make sure RH gets in there, the blood type? Uh, that's the that's the alien blood type. Yeah, I'll send it to the and right. I guess I'm an alien. <laughs> that's the alien blood. It, like, if you're RH negative, you're an alien? Yeah. Wait, are, you're oh, RH negative? Yes. That explains a lot. <laughs> I mean, I think the the odds of it are remote. That she's an alien? <laughs> uh, yeah, 15 percent of Americans have this blood type. I'm O negative.
Hey, so uh, RH negative uh, might be 15% of Americans, but it's 80% of people who say they've been abducted. So it's a very high percentage as far as uh, the research goes on abductees. Jennifer, have you ever been abducted? Not that I know of. Not that you know of is the right answer. Maybe I have. But remember that, that time of last month where you said you had an itchy butt and you didn't know why? <laughs> Wait, this is the Wi Files. We, we, we dig deep. We get to the bottom of it. See that? We dig deep. We get to the bottom. Yes, oh. I. She got it. Mike Music for Five Canadian, following your channel for a long time. Love the straddle between debunking and questioning. Flat Earth disproven 3,000 years ago using two sticks and math. I don't know. There you go. Gino's not buying it. Sam Samisky for five. Heck yeah. Made the live stream two weeks in a row. Nice job, Sam. So did I. The weekly brain tickles from you and your team helped me make it through the workday. I appreciate that. I appreciate the support. Joshua Aaron. I'm going to say Oler. I grew up at the base of Camelback Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona, and just finished reading The Alchemist for the 23rd time. I read that as well. It's a great book. Camel Synchronicities. Love to you all. Everyone should read The Alchemist. It's an easy read, very uplifting. Digital person for 10 loves seeing the Long Island escapee doing well. Love you guys. Love you too, digital person. Nemo known, um, Nimona, Nimona fan. Hi, me and my family like to learn about aliens and other cool stuff. So keep making very cool videos. Hecklefish for life. Well, I appreciate that. We'll, we'll keep at it. Right, we have to keep doing this, right? We do. Yeah. Slave driver she is. Here's Paul for 20. AJ, hearing you talk about your generator reminded me. Everyone, oh, this is, here we go. Hang on. I haven't read it yet. Let's hope it's not too dark. Everyone should be prepared to stay at home for three weeks. One gallon of water per person per day. Food, oh, this is recommendation for what you have stored. Okay. Electric is a bonus unless you have medical equipment. I agree. Three weeks is about what I have, Paul. Everyone should have it. It's I'm not worried about the first three weeks. It's after that. That scares me. But yeah, everyone should have a generator, even a little one, and it should be a dual fuel in case you can't get to gas and gas goes bad. There's pre. Thank you for thank you all. Thank you all for making me look forward to Thursdays. Absolutely love all the work you put you all put in for making such amazing videos. I'm currently regretting for eating up all your videos in one sitting. Wish there was and wish there was more. You can't eat all that in one sitting. All the cheese and... No. No is correct. Thank you, Bray Wyatt. Thanks for the interesting topic tonight. I really, really needed this pick-me-up this evening. Found the channel a month ago and watched everything some two or three times in a week. Thanks again, P.S. Keep those ads long and funny, human. <laughs> I appreciate that. And welcome to the Madhouse. Uh, Bray, thank you, Bray Wyatt. Go check out the Discord. I think you'll enjoy it. Ray J, 480. What? Wow. They see me swimming in my waist. Send me money because you know that my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Want to smell my bowl? It's dirty. Come and sniff my bowl. It's dirty. My poop is nasty. It's floating. Please tip me because you know that my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Because you know my bowl is dirty. Want to smell my bowl? It's dirty. Come and sniff my bowl. It's dirty. Soul Keith, go Gino, go Gino. Oh my God, that was fantastic. I thought my dancing was good, but Gino is a, it's a whole nother level. That Time does not exist. We are all just in a loop that resets on death. Never hit reset. I don't know what the secret is to that, but Ray J, you're going to like next week's episode. You're going to like it. And it's dark, but you're going to like it. 
appreciate the very, very generous tip there. Yes. See you near Vikinger. Did I get that right? I like I've it. Been, I've, been, I've been playing a lot of Valhalla. I think I got it. Love the show. You're the best sending you love from the land of fire and ice, which is in the process of ripping apart in the middle. It's like the U.S. and the, U and the EU are in a tug of war. I'm on the U.S. part. Stay safe, all. I appreciate the support. Hi. St. Peter's there for 20 Canadian. All you really need is a small shoebox-sized device filled with Don Smith technology. As much electricity as you'll ever need costs about $200, highly suppressed. All right. Yeah. Plans got to be this, right? Uh, it says Lockheed in it, so yeah, I don't know what this one is, but it's got my attention. Thanks for that, St. Peter. Thanks for the for another rabbit hole. Psychoholic, poor Gino. This is for him. Pathos for 20. Gnome erotica. Short and intensive. Hey yo! Or short kings out there. Oh, by the way, everybody. There's the funky chicken records for five. It's more funny watching the ladies reaction, especially Jen. Is Chino doing the funky that's chicken? Funky chicken. And, the, funky. and Victoria's doing the nah. That's just that's just the chicken dance. That's not the funky chicken. Oh, what's the funky chicken? That's the, just the chicken dance. This is clearly not the chicken like that operation. I don't know. Yeah, is this making sense to anyone? Please punch me in the face. I want to have fun too. <laughs> For uh, those ASL me, watchers, that's chicken. Everybody's giving me pinworm advice in the chat now. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, what? You have pinworm issue? No, but you said something about my butt. Oh, because when you so had the itchy butt. Yeah. No, I, I don't think it's, I think it was the, the probe. There, there was no probe. There's no pinworm. There's no itchy butt. You remember me? Yeah, it's my flower face. Oh. <laughs> flower vase. Azura spent hours trying to decode the puzzle last episode. I thought, oh, that's that's Kahokis was for sure the code, and I tried everything. That was a that, that was a red herring. The goat kiss. Alex Rogan for thirty. I introduced my best friend Nikki to you. Hey, Nikki. Now we're both addicted. Could you tell her sticker burrs for me? Can you tell Nikki sticker burrs? Sticker burrs. Can, can we all get a sticker burrs? Sticker burrs. So you get like, as you're walking through the forest, you get sticker burrs on you? You do get those. Yeah. You know, uh, as kids, uh, our grandmother had a bush that just in the middle of the Bronx that was a sticky bush. I don't know why she kept that. Our whole lives, I must have got stuck on that thing a hundred times. Do you remember that bush? Well, now the chat is going to want to talk about Grandma's Sticky Bush. <laughs> so, that happened. Thanks for that, Alex. And thanks to Grandma's Sticky Bush. That's going to be the word next week. Right? That'll be the word next week, Grandma's Sticky Bush. 
That was a bridge too far. I've gone down an alley too dark for Jen to follow. Bonds Beastie for five. Thanks for the fun drinking game and making me pee myself from laughing so hard. You're welcome. If you have any pinworms, let us know. Chat will help you out with that. John Anderson is back. I'm still giggling about the little guy popping out after some jiggling. Awesome show. Thanks to everyone. Yeah, those gnomes were popping and jiggling, and they're very... It's so fantastic. I love that story so much. This is not a professional uh, podcast. Mark has a great story for Gino Story Hour. Google Crichton Leprechaun. And how many, how many tiny creatures? We, we did goblins, gnomes, and now... Le yeah. Although Leprechaun would give us the opportunity to hear Gino do an Irish accent. So that that yes. would be worth it. Yes. I, don't I, do, I don't think I could do an Irish accent. I could do an Irish jig and maybe some river dancing. Not right now, of course. It has to coincide with the story. I don't know the Craig and Leprechaun, but shout out to all our short kings again. <laughs> What song are you dancing to? Just me. It just has to pee. All right, Harsh is there. I know you're interested in Moon, especially Dark Side. I am. Did you hear about India Landing? I did. Putting a rover on the Dark Side? Yes, first time ever on the South Pole. Fake aliens? No, I mean, if the if they really went there, I guess they, they are the first to the South Pole. Something about the moon, man. Uh, JD Joe, 50 bucks. <laughs> What the fish needs now A tips, sweet tips They're the only thing To bring a smile to my little lips Or buy a shirt A mug or a hat If it's easier Just click the super chat <laughs> Please make a video on the giant ancient tree theory. Devil's Tower in Wyoming looks a lot more like a giant ancient petrified tree stump. It does than a volcanic formation. The bigger question is, if it's a tree stump, who the hell cut it down? That's a good question. Devil's Tower does look weird. I mean, there's a ton of them that, that are part of that theory uh, that I watched a, a video on. I mean, we're talking like 100 different pictures of things that look like um, either petrified wood or uh, even petrified big giant lizards and things like that different animals could it be a y files episode is there enough there uh i don't think there's enough of a story because it's mainly just looking at pictures um there's not enough of any evidence that that's what it is because it's a new theory that you know i think is believed more on the internet than by any researchers right like tartaria well tartaria is real right <laughs> The SDRN has an idea. Maybe we can get a Jen Likes It segment, Ooh. like Gino's Story Time. How would that segment work? Well, now yep. you put me on the spot. I guess we'll have to workshop it. We'll have to workshop it. All right. We're going to workshop it, DSDRN. DS, big support of the channel. Glad she's out there. Tyler Legeza for five. Fellow Long Islander, do you think Russia crashing into the moon is a setup for the government to deny anything weird that someone might see by a telescope? Uh, I don't think so. I think they just, I think they just, their, their tech just didn't work. But uh, I tweeted out today that, you know, the headline was Russia's probe crashed into the moon, but I, I corrected it. Russia's probe was shot down as it approached the moon. It's probably what happened. As everybody knows, they're up there defending it. JB Maps for 777. Uh, HFU mentioning the living word. I appreciate that, JB Maps. Paying close attention. Oh, God is here. Dan Yahtzee. Thanks for supporting the channel, human. Yes to Silo. The first season was so good. What if that great flood was greater than we think? Maybe planet was mostly landmass at some point. 
there's that that um, expanding Earth theory that I talked about a couple of times, where instead of continental drift, you know how the continents all fit together, right? That instead of continental drift, that at one point in the far distant past, the Earth was just all land. And then as the Earth expanded, that's how the water kind of came to the surface. Interesting theory. I'm trying to work it into an episode. And remember, we did show that there's three times as much water in the Earth's crust than there is in all the oceans combined. Three times as much. So it's a thing. There's Marco. Cheers from Brazil. I always waiting. I always, I have to say it in you know in a Portuguese accent. I always waiting for the premiere night with my sushi. Sorry, hecklefish. Uh, that's all right. Appreciate that, Marco. Big Who sixty nine diggity for ten. Jen sold out on Bigfoot puppies. Hard to get more. I'll let you know. Cons: they don't potty train at all. No, but they can. We'll just go put them in the backyard. You put what Bigfoot puppies in the backyard? Yeah, there's lots of trees and stuff. Bigfoot's like trees. Is that true? That's true. All right. Victoria concurs. Raf A for six ninety nine. Have you ever heard of the fifteen sixty one celestial phenomenon? Now this is definitely the simulation, because whoever. <laughs> Just took so I'll take the biggest bite ever. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, not not doing it. Um, we never talked about that wood cut, and now here's two people mentioning it. Yeah, I have heard of it. Appreciate the support. Cheapest big spenders back for five. My heckle has showed up today. All right, after sitting in Texas for a week, and are you my mummy? Look at his avatar. I see it. How, that would, we, why was that so creepy? We may or may mommy? not have one of those gas masks at the studio now. We do have one of those, don't we? I think I put that on the Wi Files Insta. No, that was the Plague Doctor mask. We have one of those as well. Oh. I'll put the handle there. If you want to follow, there's Insta and Twitter's OMG the Wi Files. And stuff. All right. Easy cheese for five. Uh, Mount Kailish in India, no one can climb it. And those that have tried dive experiences phenomena like growing fingernails and hair. I haven't heard that easy cheese. That's interesting. For some reason, I got fascinated with the, with Mount Everest, how when people die climbing Mount Everest, it's too dangerous to take the bodies away. So they're just there. Like, who is that one guy? He's called like Green Boots or something, something like that. And where the bodies become sort of like mile markers. So it's like, oh, when you get to the second whatever campsite, you make a left at the Green Boots and then you look for the corpse with the red jacket. Like, they're just there. It's very strange. I need to read into that about Mike Kalish. That's fascinating. Ball's back. BMW Bigfoot Motorworks. Eckhart for 10. I heard something recently, but honestly, it can it can be kind of tough to search, but it's a conspiracy related to capital letters for legal names on government documents and the 14th Amendment. Love the love the videos. You know this one? Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's, it says that if your uh, name is spelled with capital letters on documents, that you're considered a corporation. And if it's spelled with lowercase, uh, you're, it's not. Or I might have it the other way around. It's a, it's a weird one. Um, but uh, also, it, it has to do with uh, the law and uh, whether or not you were the laws of the state of California and California state apply to people because they're different, um, that there, there's a difference between the state of California and California state. I, I, I've only delved into it a little, but uh, it's one that I did here. It, it sort of uh, reminds me of, uh, you know, um, 
the uh, you know uh, uh, sovereign citizen type of movement. Okay, I like that movement. All right, 324, 3 hours, 24 minutes, and uh, just a few more Super Chats to go, and then I'll let you guys get out of here. It's McDuff. Guys, can you say hello to my daughter? Her name is Reva. She loves hecklefish. Love from Scotland. Hi, Reva. Hi, Reva. That's a pretty name. It's fine. No, I'm kidding. It's a, it's a wonderful name. Jason D for 10, another hello, no tent from Portland. The show just gets better each week. First super chat I've ever done, so be gentle. Keep it up, you guys. No pressure. Thanks, Jason. I, I don't mean to drag Portland. I love Port I loved Portland. Love Portland. I, you know, I troll it because of what's happened there. It's it's very, very sad. Uh Tyler's back. No, I got you already, Tyler, fellow Long Islander. Uh, Blake Stanley for five, please do an episode on the world's fairs. If you haven't already do a quick search in the old ones, very interesting, big time conspiracies. Yet that's the Tartaria, the mud flood that is coming. Zach, 1499 Australian. I was always a time travel skeptic, but now I'm a firm believer because every time a new Wi files episode drops, it goes from six to midnight. Oh, that's nice to say, Jack. Appreciate that. Ziggy Baker. Any chance on doing an episode or podcast about John D and his Enochian language? John D is an interesting guy. So maybe I, I, I'm trying to think there's not enough to do a video on the channel, but there is enough to do a podcast. I hesitate because I'm trying to think how to make it interesting. John D is, is considered a genius or a charlatan, depending on your point of view. You know, he arrived at at the I think who was I forget which emperor it was, but he allegedly translated the Voynich manuscript. He spoke to you know, the Yanakian language is is the language of 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 the angels. So he's an interesting guy, a very smart, very intelligent, but I think a bit of a. Fraud is, I mean, fraud is, I guess, the right word, but he used his gifts, his talents, his intellect to to live a, a very lavish lifestyle at the expense of, of, of the emperor. Paul is back for five. The wrestling belt guy needs to make a Van Allen belt for Jen. <laughs> I how did they that. get how did, how did they get through the Van Allen belts? Because it's all this high speed particles and radiation that there's no yes, way to that get is true, but it's it's very spread apart. Yeah. Like the particles themselves are really spread apart and you can kind of map where the greater concentration of radiation is. And they were only in there for about an hour. They went through it really fast. So that's kind of the thing. You just, they're spread far apart they go really fast. All right. She's the official scientist of the Y files right there. David MK 3110. Seen a recent interview with RFK Jr. says institutions, including National Geographic and the Smithsonian, are under the CIA sphere influence under Operation Mockingbird. I saw him say that as well. And I believe he is right. I believe he's right. National Geographic, Smithsonian, and there are a couple of others mentioned there as well. And I don't think they're I don't think that that is part of Operation Mockingbird. If you don't know, Operation Mockingbird is when the CIA got about 400 people, very senior news agencies to put out misinformation and withhold real information at the New York Times, Washington Post, er everywhere. And I'd mentioned in a video about uh, speaking about Mockingbird that that is still a, a thing now and I could prove it. I just, I don't know if YouTube would allow that kind of video. But in the in the episode that I that I mentioned it, I was pretty clear that you should trust none of your favorite uh, news personalities. Trust none of them. Big Mega 808. I heard Stephen Greer is selling coffee cups of free energy for the apocalypse at fifteen thousand dollars each. Ooh, ooh, that hurts. Yeah, he's he's making money from his thing, you know. And people have defended him here, saying, "Yeah, he charges a lot for his services. Like, for example, you could spend like thirty five hundred bucks. You could spend a week with his group, and they teach you how to telepathically." communicate with aliens 
which no one has ever done, I don't think, to this point. But but people have defended him saying, look, he needs money to support his, his foundation. And I get that. I get it. There's Paul's back for five. Uh, you know, I can tell the difference between high Gino and sober Gino, but I'm still not sure which is which. Has he seen sober Gino? Pro actually, he hasn't. Mallory's there for 10. Thanks for being my husband's new daily binge watch. Now I'm also watching and subscribed. Thank good. I thought for a second I was a home wrecker there. No. I hope not. Ricky Ryan Ray is there for 999. I'm just now joining, and you may have answered this already, but do you ever get nervous of covering sensitive topics that people might want to silence you for? Love the channel, huge fan. I do, Ricky. I, I try to walk the line. I think I've come. I think I've come close to being in trouble, and not no specifics. I I'm not I'm not being cute. Like nothing specific has happened, but there have been a couple of episodes that I've released, and I'm like, I don't. This this might get a knock on the door because I because I believe that's a real thing. I am worried that the FIS might come creeping up my back stair. That's right. That's that. That's the fairy investigation service, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I just wrote three jokes about the fairy investigation, but I can't. No. I even have the the voice. Just just beware of the three letter agencies. And now you right. should read the last super chat. Uh, but hang on, Ricky Ryan Ray. So, but there are topics that I won't cover specifically because of that. We're lucky in that the channel is big enough that if something got weird, lots of people would know. Robo TX says, do the voice, do the fairy voice. Don't just. I could totally do it. Just move it along. I can't do it, Vision Matt, because as long as I say fairy voice, that can mean anything. It could, whatever you want it to mean, can mean. Uh, so I think, Ricky, that we're probably okay, but there are topics that I just won't do. Even Operation Mocking, like when I talk about doing an episode where I can prove that there are people in media that, that are working for the government, uh, I'm hesitant to do it because those are real people who would get angry and upset and come after me and the channel and probably my family. So I just have to be careful. Garrick Duval. This short king needs to find a seven-foot Lemurian queen. Any leads, send my way. <laughs> bow, chicka, bow. Oh, there's Blake Stanley for five. May 5th, the moon wasn't in the night sky for three weeks. It would rise and set with the sun. Backtrack on the sky map for proof. Nobody noticed conspiracy? I didn't notice that. You guys notice something weird with the, with the moon? Fairy voice or furry voice? I could probably do a furry voice also. <laughs> Paul says, AJ safe until deep fakes and chat GPT get just a little bit better. I'm not worried about any of the I, any of that stuff. As long, you know, the, it, as long as you're good, you're fine. And I think what we do here is very good. It's not great, but I, but it's good. It's good. It's the, it's the like media personalities that are just kind of mediocre. They're in trouble. They are. Uh, we all know who they are, but if as long as you're creative and you're doing different things that are different, you're fine because AI doesn't know different things. So AI doesn't have a talking goldfish. We have that. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to be okay. And by the time we're not, I, everything's going to be over anyway. The <laughs> asteroid will be here. All right, that's going to do it. Let's say goodbye to Jennifer. Thank you so much for your help tonight. You're wonderful as always. Gino, great story hour. Really appreciate it. There's Victoria starving to death. Thanks so much for your help. And thanks to everyone for super chatting tonight and for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Everyone who bought merch. I saw some people sign up for Patreon while we were uh, on the air tonight. I appreciate that as well. We couldn't do this without your support. So thanks to everyone for showing up. I appreciate every single one of you. Oh, 13,343. I especially appreciate Nathan French and Faith K and Matt and Joseph Thurmond and Basiqua. Basiqua, no super chats tonight from Basiqua. Nick Oliver, Vanessa Marie. Good night, everybody. Hecklefish, we'll see you out.
And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I swam down each, each and every highway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. I've loved, I've laughed and cried, I've had my fill. My share of losing And now As tears subside I find it all It's all so amusing Do you think I did all that And may I say Not in a shy way Oh, no, oh, no, not me. I did it my way. For what is a fish? What has he got? If not himself, then he has not to say the fish. Fish. And you know what? I did it. My.